Well, teams on their way out here at St James Park and the fans in fine voice are listening to Monday game night on TalkSport with Labrooks 18+. plus. BeGambleAware.org. Steve Harmison's normally here for TalkSport, but the Newcastle fan is on the other side of the world at the moment, probably just got up, put this show on his TalkSport app. He's down there because we have live exclusive ball-by-ball commentary of the New Zealand Test Series coming up on TalkSport 2 Wednesday night. What a series it should be as well. New Zealand beat India 3-0 in India last time out. That doesn't happen. That's their first home defeat in a series for India for over 10 years. England have just lost to Pakistan. Need to turn that around. Can Ben Stokes do it? Is Ben Stokes even fully fit? Find out more on TalkSport 2 Wednesday night, 10 p.m. But get a load of the noise in here. Newcastle, West Ham coming up. Fans here love Eddie Howe. West Ham fans do not love Julian Lopetegui. They all think their team will take a beating tonight. They all expect the manager to go if that beating happens. Newcastle taking on West Ham. It's live and exclusive only on TalkSport. Here's former England defender Danny Mills alongside Sam Matface. Thank you, Adrian. Evening, everyone. The November international break is often seen as the sacking window. Well, no one was actually sacked during that but they have started now Steve Cooper went yesterday which was a surprise because on the list of ever shuffled candidates that are in the firing line most attention was on the West Ham United manager Julian Lopetegui was brought in to promote youth bring a fresh style to the team that were perceived to be stale and with the help of his sporting director bring the average age of the squad down Well, they haven't blooded a single player who has trained in the club's academy. The style is about as fresh as a bunch of 10-day-old tulips and the average age of the team has gone up, not down. More importantly, there are five places between them and where they finished last year under David Moyes. His West Ham bubble has hardly been inflated and already it's threatening to burst. Conversely, Newcastle are on the up again. There's always a tension in these parts. The Cathedral on the Hill draws gazes from all directions. But they have won their last two and they're through to the quarterfinals of the Carabao Cup. Win tonight and they go six. Newcastle United include the three Newcastle players who played for England. It was the first time since 1997 that that happened. Hall, Livramento and Gordon all start tonight. Jared Bowen, scorer for the first time on international duty with England against Ireland, plays for West Ham. You wonder where they would be without him. I'll go through the two 11s in just a second. Our referee is Craig Pawson. Our VAR is Chris Kavanagh. Already tonight, West Ham have won one small victory. They have turned Newcastle around to face the Gallagate in this first 45. They like to shoot the other way. Black shirts with white stripes down the front, black shorts and black socks attacking the goal away to our right in the first half of Newcastle. Claret shirts with light blue arms, white shorts and socks for West Ham United attacking the goal away to our right. This fixture last year was a seven-goal thriller, but this season no stadium has seen fewer goals than St James's Park. Let's hope that tonight we buck the trend. Danny Mills is here. If this is make or break for Lopetegui, how does he make it? I'm not sure, because uh, so far we haven't really seen what West Ham are all about. I mean, I look at the attacking lineup and it's good. Somerville's a good player. Paqueta's a decent player. Bowen's a good player. Antonio can be magnificent on his day. You know, his work rate, his pace, his power, all those sorts of things. But for some reason, the players just aren't getting the message from the manager or they're not carrying out his message. West Ham fans in fine voice away to our left, high up on the Lees's end. Three sides, two sides of this ground, very high and right up in the sky. Huge glass and steel structures that surround two sides of the ground. The other two sides of the uh, St James's Park look a little bit stooped in comparison, although the Gallagher is quite deceptive. It goes high up into the back of the roof, away to our right-hand side. The ball back with Fabianski. Isaac is closing him down. He clears high into the evening sky. We're under the floodlights of the dark and dank north-east tonight. Very cold and wintry. But Newcastle have been pretty hot at home. Nick Pope is their goalkeeper. Livramento is their right-back. Cher, Kelly and Lewis Hall the back four. Longstaff, Bruno Gimaraes and Joe Willock 
in midfield. Alexander Isaac playing through the centre. Gordon starting on the left tonight, Joe Linton on the right. For West Ham, the back four in front of Fabianski. Aaron Wambasaka plays it right back. Tadebo, Kilman and Emerson. Soler and Socek sitting in midfield with Paqueta behind Bowen, Antonio and Somerville. Here's Livramento, high up on the right-hand side. Tries to slip the ball in behind the defence and he finds Isaac, who gallops into the penalty. A right-footed shot, first time. A little bit rushed, actually. Went towards the near post, didn't catch it right. And it went high and wide of the upright, away to our right-hand side and remains nil-nil. But you can see the intention there, Danny. A speeding run from Livramento, keen to get high up and join the attack. And then a nice little through ball to the edge of the penalty area for Isaac to run onto. It was unlucky, it was a good move, but West Ham were so far off the closing down, they were, they were a yard and a half late into every time they went to close down. It made it very, very easy for Newcastle to play a couple of one-twos in and around the halfway line, and they slipped the ball in behind. Adrian talked about it earlier that West Ham liked to play a really high line. I think with the pace that, West, uh, that Newcastle have in their side, that's a very, very dangerous option. Uh, one by uh, Cher on the halfway line ahead of Antonio. Newcastle won the two games before the international break. They want to continue their momentum. West Ham want to find some. They've won once away all season and they probably didn't deserve that. Newcastle have struggled to get the, uh, the blend right up front because of the sort of propensity to have too many left wingers on the, on the field of play all at one time. They don't have an out and out right winger, but... And in the last game against Forest, they flipped and moved and switched Joe Linton and Gordon, and it really worked for them. And they did it again against Arsenal, and I was here, Willock and Joe Linton moving between midfield and attack, and it was a real asset. And Willock is on the attack now down the left-hand side, combining with Gordon and trying to outpace the defender over on the far side to Debo. Across comes Wambasaka in the right fullback position, manages to clear up field, goes up towards Antonio. He can't hold it under pressure from Lloyd Kelly, and it goes back to Cher just short of the centre circle. Nil nil. But already you can see, Sam, that Newcastle have a plan. When it goes into the fullback or the wide forward, Joe Linton or Anthony Gordon, there's an overlap, somebody comes inside, there's a clear way of thinking there's a clear pattern of play and they know what they're doing West Ham on the other hand majority without the ball don't quite look like they're cohesive uh, here is uh, Gordon being played in by Cher over the top and into the penalty area he takes the ball low into the edge of the six yard box he's stabbed away by Tadebo picked up by Bowen and then he clears through the middle up to Antonio turns it round the corner and the counter attack for West Ham is on Carlos Soler speeds away down the right flank gets to the edge of the box comes in field he's got space for Somerville tries to slip him in can't do so an accurate ball which is won by Pope and immediately it's urged forward into the path of Hall and the West Ham players are not getting back quick enough and Isaac has beaten the offside trap he's in behind he's faced up the goalkeeper he scooped it and scored offside flag has gone up it will be checked by VAR but there's that high line being exposed by Alexander Isaac as we told you he would attempt to do right at the start of the programme tonight and there it is an example of it oh it's tight as well it's a lot tighter than we think from the initial initially it's one of those where the balls come from such a long way away he looks clearly offside it's a magnificent finish by the way because he's got a lot of time to think about it he sits the keeper down and he dinks him he's just offside but the West Ham line is way beyond the centre circle you know further up the pitch very very fortunate West Ham there well I mean, if we knew he was going to do that, surely you would have thought that they would know he was going to do that. The goal has been uh, disallowed. In fact, it wasn't allowed in the first place, but it, it's been cleared by VAR. But this, this is the, the right decision, but it was minimal offside. This is the problem, Sam. Those players out there are not stupid. They're not daft. They're looking at it and going, look, Newcastle have got quick players. They're going to look to play in behind. So naturally as a defender, I'm going, to, I'm going to drop and I'm going to protect the space and stop that from happening. But the manager's saying, no, I want you to stay high up the pitch. So you've got this conflict well, between look, the two. Look at it again, wan is so high up the pitch now, Socek has got to fill in and Gordon has played the ball in behind him and Bullock is now into the penalty area, poking the ball across the face of goal and it's blocked by Kilman and it's cleared away. 
Still nil-nil, but Newcastle have threatened the West Ham goal on a couple of occasions in the opening six minutes here on TalkSport. They're so bright here, they've lost just once in their last 15 home games, and that was when they were beaten here surprisingly by Brighton. Uh, in October, I say surprisingly, actually it's no surprise when Brighton beat anybody, they've been so good this season, but uh, Newcastle can take a little while to get going, they've scored just one goal in the first 30 minutes in the Premier League this season, that was against Arsenal the other week when we were here, but they've started the better of these two teams, no doubt about it. Here is Livramento, middle of the West Ham half, sends it wide to the right-hand side, Joe Linton sends the ball back to him inside the penalty area, scoops away from Carlos Soler and then tries to engage with Kilman, who just about gets the ball out towards the near touchline, but back it comes again, the black and white shirt steaming forward, clipping the ball on was Livramento, helped on by Isaac, who prodded his foot out, wasn't the best of balls from uh, Livramento, but they've got it back with Joel, Joe Willock, and, uh, and then it's worked by Bruno Gimaraes towards the far side, a yard in from the left touchline, given to the wispy figure of Anthony Gordon, thin and lean and moves at such a rapid pace, he seems to wriggle through the tightest of gaps, he plays the ball back to the left-hand side, Lewis Hall, and then into Bruno Gimaraes, back to Longstaff, who's got such a good record in the heart of midfield, I think his record is enviable. They've won seven of the eight games that he's started this season. Cher, just in front of the centre circle, plays the ball up to the muscular Joel Linton, who goes around Somerville. West Ham not getting close enough to Newcastle at the moment. The ball played wide by Hall onto Gordon. Gordon trips towards the edge of the penalty area, comes in field, beats Jabowin easily, sends the ball into the penalty area. It's blocked by Thomas Socek and then it repels to halfway. Lopetegui screaming at his team to get out from the back and push up to the halfway line. I'm not sure that's the best advice, Danny. Well, I'm pretty sure Eddie Howe has been talking to his players this week and talked about, you know, third man running or runs from deep. You know, the midfield players or wide players coming inside narrow and deep and then spinning in behind because that's the way you beat this offside shot because you're right they are so high up the pitch it's just it's glaringly obvious uh, Bowen over on the far touchline as uh, he tries to turn and run at Gordon he goes down the outside then on the inside pass Hall lovely little run by him pokes the ball to the far side the right in the wing position is Antonio he crosses the ball deep to the far side it's headed away by Livramento watched it all the way and puts it out for the first corner of the game and the first corner of the game is a West Ham corner decent ball into the box by Antonio the, the, the problem is there was nobody really in the box because Antonio had gone out wide and, and made the cross no one was really breaking the neck to get in at the back post Somerville as soon as he sees that go wide on the right hand side he's got to make a beeline for the back post uh, West Ham United attacking a corner on this uh, near side it's taken by Emerson and drifted towards the middle of the goal it's headed by Socek and he's in well it's been all Newcastle United in the first 10 minutes but it's West Ham United who strike first and it's Thomas Socek with a header from a corner that puts a bit of joy into the unhappy Hammers. Really good header from him, brilliant cross from the near side, and Newcastle are behind at home. It's Newcastle United near West Ham 1. Socek's not going to score an easier goal all season. It's a decent ball in from the corner. But it's around about, what, six yards, seven yards out. He's got an absolutely free header in the middle of the goal. He doesn't, even, he doesn't have to do anything slap bang in the middle of the goal ball pretty much lands on his head I think it's Joe Willock that's supposed to be picking him up doesn't do a job good enough in any way shape or form and he just guides it into the far corner it's the first time that Newcastle have conceded from a corner all season that is the 70th corner that they have faced and that is the first one that they have conceded a goal from well they must have defended an awful lot better than that because that's really poor defending you he doesn't even have to, he doesn't jump he almost just stoops a little bit it's seven eight yards out bang center of the goal and he just glances the ball into the far corner unopposed here is Somerville running towards the edge of the penalty area trying to play the ball out wide Antonio has it on the uh, byline turns runs towards the near post then pokes it back into a dangerous area comes back to Pakitar he strikes it it's blocked by Longstaff and comes back out to the near side Emerson's got it West Ham continue the attack Newcastle nil West Ham United 1 live on TalkSport on the Monday night Newcastle started the brighter they got in behind West Ham on a couple of occasions but let's be clear it's West Ham who have done the job they've got in front with a header from Socek and that has put them in a commanding position 
Isaac tries to urge Gordon to come and push on the West Ham defence as Fabianski kicks clear up over the halfway line towards the right hand side. Wambasaka forward, Antonio tries to come in field, he lays it off to Bowen, Bowen goes down on the edge of the box, it breaks for Antonio again, and then Bruno Gamares managed to shuffle it out and it goes out for another corner. By the way, it's worth pointing out that West Ham hadn't scored from a corner before just then. Well, it's, they've certainly got their tails up now, you know, but it's almost like they're playing off the cuff. They're, they're playing pretty much sort of individually, sort of, looks like they're almost making it up as they go along. There's no real pattern to their play, but at the moment that goal has given them a lift, it's given them some energy and they're on the front foot. But this is what the West Ham fans want to see, isn't it? A team playing with energy. That's something that has been absent in recent games. and actually was absent for the first few minutes of this match. But now they've got in front, they've got that zip and intensity. And yeah. here they come again. Got to Short make it last. Corner. Soler towards the far post, glanced away by Longstaff and then flicked out into the right fullback position and it goes away for a throw-in deep inside West uh, Newcastle United territory. It is 1-0 to West Ham United, live on Talk Sport. West Ham's performance against Everton did very little to appease the unhappy Hammers, who haven't really taken to Lopetegui, but I think they'll be pretty delighted with the way their team have started tonight. And that goal from the corner. And I just wonder whether or not there'll be an inquest at half-time as to who was supposed to be marking Thomas Socek. I think it might be Lloyd, Lloyd Kelly. Uh, Adrian just pointed it out. There was a couple of players in there. I think it might be Joe Willett got blocked and taken out. But it... You cannot allow... Socek's one of their best headers, right? You cannot allow it's a probably free... probably their best but Yeah, it is their best header, yeah. You cannot allow him to have a free header. doesn't even have to jump. He stoops slightly. Seven yards out from goal, unopposed. That's, n that's not acceptable. Bakitar is down after a whack from Joel Linton. The referee did not give a free kick. He said play on. But Lucas Bakitar has stayed down. And uh, Craig Pawson, who is our referee today, uh, we do have VAR, obviously, Chris Kavanagh. It's a clash of knees, Sam, that's all it is. Watching that. There's, yeah. no, there's no intent with it. I mean... It hurts, though, didn't it? I'll tell you what, though, Joel Linton's done well to stay up. <laughs> it, it looked like the foul was almost the other way around. He's made, he is made of iron. <coughs> He's uh, a unit, isn't he? Yeah, he is very strong. Let's put it that. Oh, that's a poor ball by Sher. He's given it straight to Bowen. Bowen running at the edge of the penalty area, then gives it straight back to Lloyd Kelly. Kelly waiting for a sort of... Uh, Hall to fan out into the left fullback position so he can play him down the line and then Willock tried a little trick to get it to, into Gordon didn't come off it goes out of play and it's away for a throw over on the far side West Ham had looked slow lacked the levels of dynamism and athleticism that you need in the Premier League up until tonight something that Newcastle usually offer in abundance uh, this game not won yet that's for sure we've only played 14 minutes to Debo uh, after being hounded by the Newcastle players gets the ball out of the fence to Emerson who clips it upfield, missed by Antonio back to Lloyd Kelly and the Newcastle supporters want their team on the front foot again Bruno Gimaraes inside the centre circle being hounded by Carlos Soler West Ham have got a lead to defend now Longstaff down the right Joel Linton continues, sends the ball into the box flicked away by Wambasaka but straight to Willock who sends it wide from the edge of the penalty area a right footed shot which he will feel he should have hit the target with his reaction tells you that but that was the danger that they pose on the attack down the right with Joel Linton good cross into the box flicked away by Wambasaka but he flicked it straight to Willock who returned it with interest you're right I think Willock will be disappointed that he didn't do better with that he had time tried to pick his spot tried to bend it in the far corner didn't quite get enough bend on it it was a really poor header from Wambazaka. Didn't really get anything on it and just sort of glanced it straight into his path. Got to defend better than that. Julian Lopetegui is uh, talking to his coaching staff. He uh, looks like he uh, hasn't uh, had a shave this morning. <laughs> Dishevelled he looks, doesn't he? Yeah, he looks a little bit uh, like he's been through the mill. Uh, here is uh, Gordon out towards Wall. Uh, Hall who's gone on the uh, underlap and he sends the ball in towards the near post a good cross that flicked away by Emerson who got into the penalty area and turned it behind and away for the first Newcastle corner of the evening and Livermento is going to cross to take it that's sometimes why it's so worth having a left footer on the left hand side go down the outside put a cross in the box causes all sorts of problems 1-0 to West Ham United, the visitors, and Lewis Hall trots across, the newest Newcastle player to win an international clap, I suppose. No, it's, it's, that's Livramento, isn't it? Yeah, he did the. He played in the uh, second game, not the first. Uh, but uh, the two of them with new caps 
ball sending the ball towards the far post and it just pops off of Joel Linton and into the arms of Fabianski who's replaced Alphonse Ariola now really as the first choice goalkeeper Ariola is on the bench tonight uh, I don't think that the uh, performance against Tottenham Hotspur endeared him to Lopetegui who is a goalkeeper by trade he was a uh, backup goalkeeper at Barcelona when Bobby Robson was in charge played under Cruyff as well long ball forward by Bruno Guimaraes out to Livramento on the near side takes it down high up the field faces up Emerson comes infield looks for an outlet Longstaff was in front of him but he decided to go backwards instead of forwards and Newcastle have it with Cher to Bruno Guimaraes who trots forward nudges it into the right wing position and Joel Linton a yarn in from the touchline a little bit infield is Livramento just back from the angle of the penalty area it's teased down to the corner flag and Livramento who tries to help the ball into the box a poor header away Longstaff will bring it down Joel Linton will arrive on the edge of the box a little turn by him not once but twice gets the crowd on their feet and Newcastle keep possession on the edge of the West Ham penalty area 1-0 West Ham lead Bruno Gimaraes takes it into the box a right footed cross Isaac chests it down gets the shot away but he's underneath it and I think it took a flick off uh, a defender and goes over the top of the crossbar and there is an inquest inside the West Ham defence Socek having a word with Todibo well he shouldn't be able to bring the ball down on his chest on the edge of the box West Ham's pressing intensity when they haven't got the ball trying to get close to people they are way off it they are giving Newcastle United way too much time and space corner which Lewis Hall will take they are still leading by a goal to nil thanks to the corner uh, that was sent into the head of Thomas Socek here is Hall deep towards the far post header down by Kelly and it just sort of flicked behind and went straight out for a goal kick that was an opportunity for Lloyd Kelly who's never scored a Premier League goal just on the closing down Sam what I'm talking about is to put a, a, to put a Premier League player under real pressure You've got to be close enough that he's all he's thinking about, he's got his head down, he's looking at the ball. And that's pretty much a yard away. You know, almost, you've got to, if you can put your arm out, you can pretty much touch him. Oh, Fabianski under pressure from Isaac there. Almost gave the ball away inside his six-yard box and in front of his goal. Bit of wrestling from Antonio and Kelly, but Kelly stayed on his feet and Antonio's gone down and Newcastle have got the ball. Good hunting from Isaac. But that's look at the difference in the closing down. When Newcastle closed down... They put the West Ham players under real pressure. They make it, they force them to play the ball quickly. Like that, Joel Linton has a poor touch. Can have another touch, have another touch. He's not really under too much pressure. Livramento gets the ball, sends it down the right. Looking for Isaac, he's continued his run, Livramento. Instead, they send the ball into the penalty area, takes a deflection, almost came through to Willock, but Fabianski was quick off his line. Actually, there was an opportunity there for Isaac to slip it down the right side to Livramento. Made a, a really good run. He'd taken up a couple of intelligent positions, Livramento. He's wandered into a sort of central area at times as well to pick the ball up, allow Joel Linton to go towards the touchline, and then come back out and add an extra angle. So where's Somerville? What well, you know, that's he's the winger, but that's his fullback. He's over here. Yeah, well, yeah, but exactly. But Livramento's coming down this side. You've got to do the defensive job. You've got to work hard. Livermento's just stepping into midfield. Somerville's just letting him run every time. Gordon gets away from Wambasaka and then he's challenged by Tadebo. It bounces for Willock and then Wambasaka recovers the ball. Socek plays it wide. Wambasaka's got it a yard in from the right touchline. He nudges it forward. 1 0 to West Ham live on Talk Sport tonight. And uh, we're under the lights on the northwest and the northeast. Sorry, northwest. I just come from the northwest. It's actually quite a pleasant train journey. I was a bit worried about it, actually, when I woke up this morning and saw all the disruption that was going on, but actually it seems to have been OK. Touch wood, let's hope that's like that tomorrow. Here's Somerville, cutting in towards the edge of the penalty here, pokes it in towards Bowen. It's cut away by Cher. Gordon's had a man shout from these uh, supporters, and then Somerville, as he tries to rob Longstaff, gives away a free kick. Lopetegui goes up to the fourth official, gets in his face. Tony Harrington just says, go and sit down. Be interesting to see it again on the replay. Oh, I, I think he's lucky. I think Somerville sticks his foot between his legs, between Longstaff's legs, and nicks the ball away. And then Longstaff pretty much throws himself to the ground. I, I think he's fortunate in that instance. You're listening to Newcastle nil West Ham 1 on TalkSport with Sky Sports. And don't forget that you can stream the biggest Premier League games available on no contract with now, like Newcastle versus West Ham, live right now. Search now sports tomorrow morning you'll get woken up by Jeff Stelling and Ali McCoy they're on the breakfast show together this morning great show this morning and uh, 
Another entertaining four hours tomorrow from six o'clock when you wake up. I'll give it till eight when Adrian's on. I think I'll probably wake up about then. Oh, you're on at eight o'clock, are you? I'll be listening on the train on the way down, don't worry. Yeah. Right fullback back Wambasaka sends the ball into Soler. It's kicked against Willock and goes behind. It's a goal kick for West Ham out on our right-hand side. Lopetegui, not the only one to come under the microscope. Some of the newer players have also been uh, glanced at by the West Ham supporters. Some of the older players too. Lucas Pakatar not playing anywhere near the, the level that he was at last season when he was touted for a move to Manchester City. He has got that... Premier, uh, the FA ban looming over him, the FA charge looming, looming over him. He insists he's done nothing long, wrong, but he is being investigated and he knows it. And then, of course, there is the striking department, which consists of three players that have got a combined age of 98 and a questionable injury record. And that's why they haven't scored too many goals. But they've managed to get one tonight with Thomas Socek, 22 and a half gone. Here on the left-hand side is uh, Crescencio Somerville. He plays the ball back towards uh, Carlos Soler. He infield gives it to Paqueta. Back to Soler from Bowen, who's right footed. Shot goes towards the far post, and Soler's effort is narrowly wide. And it's out for a goal kick away to our left. But that was a well worked West Ham United move. Little 1 2 in and around the edge of the box. I think Willett's gone down. Maybe caught on the follow through from Soler. Looks like he's getting back up. Looks like he's going to be all right. Hopefully, just a kick, nothing too serious. I did mention uh, before that there hadn't been many goals in this stadium this season. Some of that has been down to the good defensive display by Newcastle. They do have the second best defence in the league as it stands. 12 goals conceded, the joint second best defence after conceding that goal. Obviously, uh, Liverpool have got the best defence in the league. But uh, it does look as if they've got to deal with a significant problem for Joe Willock here. who's had a terrible run of injuries. He's got a whack on the shin. And, and that, that's what he's holding he, he's taking his socks down he, he's holding his shin again I'm, I'm not going to I don't want to be overcritical but when you look at the size of some of the shin pads sometimes you have to question that because they're, they're, they're so small minuscule yeah, at times I, I mean unless you've been in a Premier League boot room I don't think you realise just how small they are uh, they are there's a minimum level cough, cough, coffee lid size is yeah, what they are yeah they're, 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 there's a minimum level of, of what they're allowed to be and, and a, a lot of players not every player but a lot of players cut them down to the minimum dimensions and if you've got if you imagine a sleeve of your coffee cup that you get from Starbucks or from Costa and you have it folded flat it is about that big tiny complete waste of time you know that's the problem I, I don't get it what did you used to wear did you used to wear the ones with the ankle? No, uh, had, 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 had absolutely nothing on my ankles. Couldn't bear that. Really didn't like it. Would would, have, would take a, a whack on the ankle. No, just felt too restrictive, right. you know, in that way. But uh, do you know what? I, I used the original pro pads that were, I think were, I think Gary Lineker did do it. I think, were they, might have been Quasar once in a time. Oh, Quasar. Time. Remember that? Yeah. I, I had, do you know what? I had the same pair of shin pads for my whole career. Did you? Yeah. They've got holes in, they've got splits. Have you still got them now? <laughs> yeah, yeah, still got them. They are absolutely battered. But it was one of the... And, and I got some serious injuries in them as well, but I still wore them. But yeah, that, and they, they were reasonable size. Uh, over on TalkSport 2, Port Valley crew Alexandra by a goal to nil. That's happened uh, in the first 20 minutes of that game. Shorrock after three minutes on the score sheet. It's 1-0 to West Ham here. Joel Willock is back up and he is getting some treatment he's hobbling down the touchline on this near side I think he's going to be okay to continue tomorrow night Sporting Lisbon against Arsenal is live on TalkSport in the Champions League Adrian's going to be at Manchester City versus Feyenoord commentary from Ian Danter and Darren Bent tomorrow night 8 o'clock at the same time Sunderland leaders of the Championship take on West Brom on TalkSport 2 here is Nick Pope kicking clear and high into the air it drops on the halfway line brought down by Pagatar he's fouled by international colleague Joe Linton and it's going to be a free kick just short of the halfway line for West Ham United who lead by a goal to nil not sure that was a free kick either it was great touch initially from Pagatar absolutely magnificent pulled it out of the air killed it stone dead and then Joel Linton just used his strength and sort of reached his long leg around him just to poke it away 
You're listening to Newcastle nil West Ham 1 on TalkSport with Enterprise Rent-A-Car. Enterprise has 450 branches with all the business, the, the vehicles that your business needs. We're live at St James's Park in the northeast of England and uh, the game just su suffered a little bit after that injury, just lost a little bit of a momentum. Newcastle trying to find that now with uh, Longstaff travelling through the centre circle, but challenged by Antonio, a big, strong, powerful challenge. Then he ran out of room and Joel Linton is penalised for a foul on him. I don't think that was as robust as the one that he perpetrated on Longstaff just before that, but anyway, Craig Paulson has given the free kick eight yards inside opposition territory. Yeah, and Antonio did really well because he slid in and managed to hook his heel around the ball, didn't touch Longstaff. I think Joel Linton probably knew what he was doing. Yeah, just bundled into the back of him. Yeah, as, as Antonio cut across him, he knew he was always going to take him out. Soler hits the ball first time as it drops after Hall's clearance from the free kick. Livramento clears it after a deflection from the right fullback position. Uh, Joel Linton does well to hold on to it, goes out of play off uh, Pakatar, it's a throw in. Wednesday night, Liverpool against Real Madrid. It's a big game for us. Eight o'clock start on Talk Sport. The same time, Aston Villa against Juventus. What a game that is going to be. Both those matches on the Talk Sport network. And we've still got. We haven't even got into our 50 games over Christmas yet. So December starts, there's 50 live commentaries. Not even got into that yet. When I started on Saturday, we still had 17 to go before we got to December. All the football, all the time, it's right here on Talk Sport. Newcastle have it deep inside their own half. The fans trying to encourage them to get forward because the ball's spent a little bit too much time for their liking inside their own half. Up they come, towards the right touchline. Joel Linton holds the ball up and then powers forward. He's chased by Somerville. He tried to play it infield to Longstaff, but it deflected off Pakatar. Just bounced into the left fullback position. Emerson uh, got hold of it, and then a little back heel to Kilman, who will clear upfield. Cher will send it back, and he chests it down, and then plays it out towards Joel Linton, who strokes it back to halfway. Newcastle, a lot of possession in the game so far, but they're behind here to the goal from Thomas Socek after just 10 minutes of the match. I think that goal has been good for us because it now means Newcastle have to come out and play and, and really have, you know, really attack. Uh, space for Livramento down the right side. A reverse ball by Joel Linton has found him. Isaac helps it on. It bounces on the edge of the penalty area and he pokes it out to Gordon. Gets it back into the centre towards Longstaff who rises and headers the ball into the heart arms of L Fabianski who was at his near post. He didn't get enough purchase on that header. Longstaff, he got good height on his leap but couldn't get above it and not enough purchase on the ball and it was an easy save for Fabianski. 1-0 to West Ham. It was a difficult chance. It was a little dink to the far post. But you just see the closing down there from Anthony Gordon. He was absolutely rapid, went flat out and therefore West Ham give the ball away. That's the difference yeah. I'm talking about in the closing down. He's terrific at that. They are terrific at it and it's something that Eddie Howard complained about at the beginning of the season. They didn't have their, their intensity, their mojo. They've certainly had it in the last but couple not, of games. it's not hard, Sam. You don't need to be a talented player to be able to close down. You need to be a fit player, though, don't you? But that's easy. Anybody can get fit. That's just about dedication and hard work. Simple as that. You don't need talent to get fit. I don't know, it's getting a lot harder as the years go on. <laughs> well, Dan, well be it's because you're nearly 40, Sam. That's <laughs> why. <laughs> here, is, here is Cher down the right side. Livramento, low cross into the box. Isaac controls it, can't get his shot away. Comes back to Livramento down the right side of the area. Tries to tease it back for Cher, but it's Joel Linton who picks it up. We just hang on to it a little bit too long. And Soler was very quickly across to pinch it. The online PSG man then lost it to Livramento because, again, they worked hard to get back and win the ball. Here is Bruno Gimaraes in the centre of the West Ham half. Moved out wide to Livramento. Gimaraes has gone on towards the... Uh, byline and he's sort of trying to tuck it back but there's no one there so it's dribbled out of play for a throw in and the idea I think was to keep West Ham squeezed inside their own half of the field and Jason Tyndall just comes out the assistant manager and just uh, just pushes the ball, pushes everybody down towards the right hand side, what's going on here? There's going to be our first change of the game No, uh, no, change of shirt That's what I mean, it's going to be a oh. change of shirt for Mikel Antonio He just wanted to get his he just, he just wanted to show us how, how, how well built he was. I mean, obviously, he does a lot of work to get fit. I mean, he's gone off the pitch. The, oh, the, referee, the fourth official is not happy because he's left the pitch without permission. Oh, that's embarrassing. And now he's not allowed to go back on again. That's a little bit silly, isn't it? His shirt's been ripped, so he's been told to change his shirt, and he can't change it on the pitch. <laughs> Here is Willock. 
Uh, keeping the ball over on the far side. Hall with a cross deep towards the far edge of the penalty. It's too big and it goes in between Isaac and Joel Linton and scoots behind the way for a goal kick away to our right-hand side. If, if they'd have, you know, would anybody complain if they'd just thrown him shirt and he'd put the shirt on? No. Sometimes, ref, you, use your brain. To be honest with you, I was just mesmerised by the fact that his top half of his uh, torso was so wide and the, and the middle part was so slight. It's a big lad. He is muscular, to say the least. He has been working hard. Well, in the international break, he didn't have much to do while he was waiting to find his passport, I suppose. Uh, here is uh, Longstaff over on the far side. Uh, Hall's got it back again into Anthony Gordon and then it's all the way back to the edge of the centre circle where Gumarash just nudges it to the right. Cher moves forward, pushes it into the path of Livramento. He's in a right-wing position, then Cher gets it back and crosses deep towards the far post and Willock can't keep it in and it runs out to the far side. Oh, he has kept it in? No, he hasn't. Eventually it goes out and away for a goal kick away to our right-hand side. Lopetegui is out on the edge of his technical area and then he starts to stray to the edge of Eddie Howes. And he's been pulled back by the fourth official and then one of his assistants comes over for an animated chat down in front of us. And Newcastle have got to find a way back into this game, Danny. How do they do it? I think they will. I think they've just got to keep doing what they're doing. They're, they're dominating possession. They're dominating play. They created one or two chances. Obviously, the, the Isaac chance early on. West Ham obviously have now got something to hold on to and, and fight for. You know, that's lifted their spirits slightly. But Newcastle look like they've got a game plan. They've got good players... They're playing in a good way. They're confident. The closing down is the biggest difference. It, it's Newcastle are picking passes off at ease. Good ball out towards the far side from Joel Linton to find Anthony Gordon, but wan reacted well. But the interplay between Joe Linton and Isaac to set that move up was impressive. One touch football in the middle of the park. It was swept out to the far side, but wan covered the ground well and the ball from Joel Linton might have been just a little bit off. Here is uh, Joel Linton again, right side, trying to tuck infield from Emerson. He gets around him and then tries to play it in between Somerville and uh, Emerson. Somerville does well to get back and help out his defence this time. Pakatar in a tangle, almost gives the ball away. Longstaff dives in, it comes off Soler, goes out for a throw in. It's a Newcastle throw and they're putting a little bit of pressure on now. Bruno Gimaraes moves towards the edge of the box, exchanges passing with Isaac. The second ball back to him wasn't great from Isaac. And he had to turn and poke it to share to keep Newcastle in control of the ball. But again, it's just... Look, look Newcastle, look. Two or three touches. Oh, lovely body swerved by Hall. Goes past wan Into the air. Right foot is shot. Oh, it's narrowly wide of the goal. And he thinks it took a nick off a West Ham player and went out for a corner. And uh, well, the referee now coming over on this near side to have a word with Tony Harrington who is the fourth official who himself has come onto the pitch oh no he's not oh he's got a problem with his uh, technical equipment oh he's got to come off the pitch surely well he can't come off the pitch because if he comes off the pitch he'd have to stay off for 30 seconds Dan well that, that would do us all a favour I think <laughs> well that was a brilliant run by Lewis he's Hall not, he's, he's not taking his shirt off though is he no <laughs> Uh, Lewis Hall has... It was a pretty, yeah, right. It was an absolutely fantastic run. I just wonder if Isaac had thrown himself, slid in at the far post, would he have been able to get on the end of that? He was the closest to it, uh, but he didn't connect and it didn't find the target. And as a result, still 1-0 to West Ham with 10 minutes to go before the end of the first half. The ball is out in front of the stand on the far side and it will be thrown in by wan down level with the... Newcastle penalty area it goes back to halfway to Debo into Kilman who's pressed relentlessly by Isaac he then brings the ball out of defence well gives it to Bowen Bowen then sent back towards wan and then Kilman to Pakitar just right of the centre circle and West Ham having a bit of possession for not the first time in the game but for the first time in a little while the statistics at this present moment not looking great for West Ham 40% of the ball They've had just one shot on target, and that was the goal. Newcastle 60% of the ball, and their expected goals total so far much higher than West Ham's. It's West Ham who lead. Uh, Livramento trying to do something about that, pinches the ball from Emerson, runs up the field, tries to play it into Isaac, but Socek stood his ground really well, actually. Came across, forced him into playing the pass, and Isaac is saying to Livramento, you needed to play it a lot earlier. He's right. Longstaff into the box, poor delivery, oh comes back to Gordon, great save Fabianski, Willock with an effort and it's whacked against 
Wambasaka, Hulk attacking the penalty area left hand side. What a mistake from Tadebo. He's brought the ball down inside his six yard box and then just kicked it straight to Gordon. Gordon from point blank range found Fabianski instead of the back of the net. What a chance. Oh, I think you have to put that down as a fantastic save from Fabianski. It was magnificent. I mean, it just threw his body, made himself as big as possible. And I think it might have been his trailing leg that it hit. But you're right, it's a terrible. Yeah, it's his trading thigh that he just catches. Brilliant save. And then, the, well, the block from Wambazaka was just as good. Lovely tackle from Livramento on this near he side. Looks, he looks real quality, doesn't he? Terrific, and he's played the ball down the right. Fabianski's come out to the edge of the penalty area to clear. Joel Hinton has chested it down. Shoot, they say. He's out of his goal. They could play on instead, and Bruno Gimaraes tries to play it down to Willock, but he just didn't get the trajectory right. It was too far in front of Willock, and it's cleared away. But Newcastle have played some enterprising stuff, and I think they'll be disappointed if it stays 1-0. They will, but I think, and you look at Eddie Howe's demeanour, he'll just, he'll look, just keep playing, keep doing what you're doing, and the chances will come. Keep it tight, keep switched on at the back, keep your concentration, don't give any silly goals away, like they already have, and they are going to create chances. Well, Newcastle United have got a packed December schedule. This is the first of nine fixtures before the new year. Liverpool and Manchester United finishing that uh, period too. They haven't conceded from a corner before today, but they have now. And that is the goal that separates the two as we go towards the 38th minute of this game. They've had their chances at the other end though. Missed opportunities and a big save from Fabianski has kept the scoreline. Newcastle United nil, West Ham United won on Talk Sport. And for the latest odds, you can head to Labrooks, where right now you can back Newcastle to win at 23 to 20. You can back West Ham to win the game at 15 to 8. The draw is available at 14 to 5. That's all thanks to Labrooks, 18 plus, biggambleaware.org. And again, they're trying to play that ball in behind, in between the defenders for Isaac. So close yet again. Bowen tricks his way past one challenge, and in from the middle of the Newcastle half plays it wide towards the left in Somerville, but Livramento is his equal and nabs the ball, plays it off Somerville and it goes out of play and away for a throw in in the right fullback position for the two. Uh, we're not even at half time yet, I know that, I understand that. But I have to say, the two fullbacks for Newcastle, fabulous. Two brilliant young English fullbacks. And, and do you, how much, I mean, obviously last year they, they played a bit, they played a role, but they weren't first choice. They were dripped in and out by Eddie Howe which I think arguably is a very sensible thing well, to do at and, their and, age and we yeah. talked about that at, Eight, the, at the top 19 of the show and 21. yeah we talked about the top of the young players can be inconsistent from time to time you know you've got to learn especially as a defender experience is everything learning your trade you know learning when to attack when to defend oh and, he's off again Gordon causing uh, Fabianski all sorts of problems and again there you go. Bruno Gimaraes goes and closes down and wins the ball back high up the pitch he sends it into the box he's accessed it down he shoots and it's just narrowly wide of the goal it's got to be a corner what a chance that was brilliant closing down from Newcastle turning the ball over high up the pitch the tone was set by Gordon chasing down Fabianski then backed up by Bruno Gimaraes who turned swung the ball towards the edge of the penalty area Isaac chested the ball down, swung a left boot at it and only narrowly missed. Right. I thought there might have been a nick on that as he shot. Ooh, it was close as the defender comes in. I mean, again, it, it's the difference between the two teams is that closing down. When Newcastle closed down, it's proper closing down. They're making the player on the ball make a quick decision that he doesn't want to make. When West Ham closed down... It's within three or four yards. And a player in the Premier League in this day and age, give him three or four yards, it's an eternity. Gamaresh out towards the left-hand side. Isaac, who's scored four in four, has had brilliant opportunities. He's never scored five in five for Newcastle, though. Hall, he's got a chance to elevate the ball into the box here. Out comes Fabianski. Could have pulled that back to the edge of the 18-yard box, Danny, where Bruno Gimaraes was in acres of space, but he decided to cross the ball instead. Yeah, I think once he's into that near the byline, he's just looking to dink it up, try and get a header on it. Sometimes, as you know, you're running that way. It's hard to sort of to keep your eye on the ball and look over your shoulder and cut it back as well. Newcastle 
been terrific in this first half at closing the ball down. Oh, missed by Wambasaka as the ball's played crossfield and Joe Linton has picked it up, delivered the cross to the far post. Gordon tries to help it back towards goal and it's going to loop on top of the goal and over the top of Fabianski's head. West Ham took the lead in the game, but they've been hanging on in the last 20 minutes or so. And with four minutes before the break, Union Lopetegui will be hoping to get to half-time unscathed. Nick Pope only had... Well, he didn't make the save, did he? <laughs> I think that's the only shot. Is that the only shot he's had to deal with. Yeah, and, and obviously it's gone in the back of the net from the corner. Not a lot he could do about that. But, I mean, well, New, Newcastle have dominated. They've been much the better team. You're right, West Ham are hanging on. Longstaff, Gordon, in the middle of the park to Bruno Guimaraes, who plays it wide towards the right, collected by Livramento now, and then back to Gordon again, who's switched out towards this near side. It's elevated towards the edge of the penalty area, off the thigh of Emerson, who's looking to clear. Kilman sends it back to Emerson, who then chips it towards the halfway line. It's going to be Sher who gets there first. <laughs> Antonio and uh, Lloyd Kelly having a bit of a wrestling match. Kelly wasn't happy about that. He's giving some mouth to Antonio. Game continues over on the far side with Newcastle on the attack, and Joel Linton taking on Jared Bowen who closed him down it runs out of play and goes out for a throw into Newcastle well, they want to get it started quickly yeah but Kelly just muscling Antonio out though, which isn't easy by any means and I think Antonio just getting a little bit frustrated playing that lone striker I was getting no service whatsoever he's just having to chase lost, lost cause after lost cause Newcastle have it again down the left Joe Linton is uh, wrestling with wan who heads the ball behind and it's out for a corner and uh, he was under pressure there from the Brazilian wan -Bissaka. He has a little swig of a water bottle. It's thirsty work chasing up and down that touchline, having had to deal with Gordon and Hall and now Joe Linton as well. One thing I never understand, look, West Ham have brought everybody back well within the eight-up. If you clear the ball, all, you, all Newcastle have to do is, is put their foot on the ball and they put it straight back into the box. You've got to get pressure on somebody to try and get yourself out of your 18-yard box. Gordon to take the corner far side, just to make sure he's got the placing right. Oh, Craig Porson's just got to make sure that uh, no one's dancing too close to one another. Carlos Soler has uh, had a word from uh, the official. Fabianski. Just, and just let it Alexander happen, Ref. Is it? Huh? Just let it happen. Then you have to have to give a penalty, give a penalty or a free kick. Simple as that. Well, we will eventually get this corner kick as we go into minute 44 at the end of the first half. 1 0 to West Ham. Ball in the quadrant now. There are eight black and white shirts to aim at for Gordon, who delivers the ball under the goalkeeper, who punches it away on the edge of the six-yard box. Hall keeps hold of it, sends it back to Livramento. He's encouraged to put it straight back over the top. He does that. Fabianski's going to come and claim it, though, and it's an easy catch for him. And it was a bit of a wasted set piece, really. And there is yeah, space then, on this near uh, side for Antonio. Yeah, but look how deep he is. 20 yards in, 25 yards inside his own half and then has to go back to his centre half Emerson tries to help it forward Gordon gets there first oh, that was a poor challenge by Socek should have been a free kick referee didn't give it Antonio just kicks it forward high up the field and it's straight into the arms of the goalkeeper Nick Pope who has been superb for Newcastle this season no goalkeeper has been more valuable to their team in the Premier League than him this campaign He's conceded four goals fewer than the expected goals faced, the best in the league. And what Eddie Howe has done brilliantly with Nick Pope, we know he's not the greatest goalkeeper with his feet, playing out from the back. So he doesn't ask him to overplay. If it's on simple and he can make that easy pass, then yes, give it. But if he's not sure, get it up the pitch, get it out to Joel Linton, get someone to get their head on it, challenge for the ball and then we'll deal with it. He's not asking him to do stuff that he's not comfortable at. And if he wants to play out, you can play out, by the way, by bowling the ball. And he of does course, that. yeah. Um, it, I couldn't understand, actually, why he wasn't in the England squad last time around. Bearing in mind they had a goalkeeper drop out, and they ended up calling up James Trafford. I thought it was a bit strange that he wasn't involved in the, uh, the England squad. Three minutes of added time at the end of the uh, 90, uh, 90 and 45 for... Uh, Newcastle to try and get back into this game for West Ham to hold on to their advantage which they garnered after the 10 minutes from a corner in towards Thomas Socha but look but at that closing Gordon down from is Gordon on, it's brilliant on Fabianski again as the ball goes back to him he's on Kilman too and uh, you know they demand work right here and he certainly gives it 
Uh, and they find it so difficult, West Ham, to get out as a result of that. And again, that pressure means that they've got to go back to their goalkeeper and it's still black and work, white shirts everywhere. And they're panicking West Ham as they try to clear it. Eventually, Emerson just kicks it long and Antonio can't hold it up. And now Izek's going to get it back. And ball. Is that a handball by Kilman? Just back to Bruno Guimaraes on the edge of the area. Referee says, now, you, hold on a second, you've got to give oh, a, no, a free no, kick no. and he hasn't, he's given it the other way. To be fair, it was only one hand and it was only four yards in front of the referee. He didn't catch it. It was almost a Pat Jennings catch, one-handed. Well, I, I'm not sure that uh, Mr Paulson will want to see that again. What's the foul for? I don't know. I'm trying to look at the monitor to see whether or not there was one. I can't find it, so I'm going to just say, let's play on. Um, <laughs> Bizarre. Fabianski to clear from the edge of the penalty area. It remains 1-0 to West Ham. It's been a good game, though, hasn't it? This is what you want on a Monday night. This is what you get on a Monday night on Talk Sport. We bring you all the Monday night football and... You know what, when the news came through that we are going to be doing that for another four years after this, it's absolutely delightful to know that we've got this Monday Night Football for you for as this will be interesting see in the future. See, this is, this is, so, Socek went down, rolled off the pitch and was injured, then rolled back on, but Craig Paulson didn't make him stay off. It's all about consistency, Dan. Well, it, exactly. <laughs> Juan Basaki sends it forward high into the evening sky on a chilly night in Newcastle. Not a great header by Livramento, and the effort from Bowen certainly is. And he sends it back on the left foot volley from 25 yards, and it's taken out of the sky by the giant goalkeeper, Nick Pope. He needed to be giant as well. That was a great strike from Bowen. It sat up nicely for him. Left foot, another four or five inches, and that was over the top of Pope into the far corner. It was a brilliant hit. Joel Linton turning the ball around after being chased by Tadebo is now out of position. They want to get the ball forward quickly here after, uh, well, we nearly played all three of our minutes at the end of the first 45. Here is uh, Fabian Scher taking it wide on the left towards Silivramento. Lopetegui standing down, pointing to where he wants his defenders to be. Emerson just getting in Livramento's face a little bit. Cow Ref cowardly, that. Referee says play on. And then he says, that's enough. He's seen as much as he wants to in the first 45 minutes. The first 45 minutes where West Ham United have taken the lead thanks to a Thomas Suchek goal after just 10 minutes from a corner after Newcastle had dominated. They went on to dominate most of that first half anyway. They've only scored five first half goals this season before tonight, but they've got one this evening and it has put them in front at half time. The question now is... Can they hang on to it? Newcastle nil, West Ham won. Funny old game football, and how on earth are West Ham winning? I'm just looking at Jared Bowen. You need to leave this club, mate. I mean, that shot at the end was brilliant. Uh, he's wasted, wasted at West Ham United under this manager playing like this. He's basically an auxiliary fullback when we know what he can bring in the attacking third of the pitch. Wasted at West Ham, Jared Bowen absolutely wasted I feel for the lad linked with Liverpool in the summer and he's having to put up playing like this and yet somehow they're still 1-0 up I mean his brilliant shot there at the end of the half I'm with you Danny it was fantastic a great idea great effort sat up he thought I'm going to smack it and just put a little bit more on it and that goes in and they're 2-0 up it's a ridiculous scoreline given the balance of play in the first half it is and <laughs> And with you know, Gareth Bowen, it's a great strike, it's a brilliant technique. He's not leaving West Ham because Danny Dyer is his father-in-law, and he says, he says <laughs> there he's going. There will be repercussions. He says he's going nowhere. <laughs> <laughs> Simple as that. That's why he's not left. But no, I, but it, but it's West Ham are relying on individual brilliance or someone individual doing something. Newcastle have a clear plan, you know. And I like I like Newcastle the way that they play. They mix it up. They play out from the back. They play into midfield at times but then they will hit that ball over the top. They will hit that diagonal out to the wide player, whether that be the wide player or the fullback, to try and isolate people one-on-one. -on -one. I really like the way that they're playing. They've been on for It was poor defending. Should never allow a free We'll get header. into the goal in a minute, you know, in a minute, yeah. But the way that Newcastle play, their closing down has been magnificent. That's, it shouldn't be, because that should be mandatory in every single team that you play for. Yeah. You close down and you close down properly and they are doing it brilliantly. West Ham are so far off it when they close down that Newcastle players can have two or three touches and basically pick whatever pass they want. Well, let's 
just to analyse the goal because having looked at the goal a number of times, Lloyd Kelly was closest to Suchek, but he doesn't jump, he doesn't get airborne. There were basically four West Ham players who were all grouped together, edge of the box. Suchek was one of those. There were only three Newcastle players with him and Gordon was about five yards behind just marking Gross, just doing nothing basically. So Pakatar ran free, leaving it three on three. No one looked to be uh, marking a man. Kelly didn't move and therefore Suchak had a, a free header. I think the, we talked about Lloyd Kelly coming in and doing a job beforehand, but I think the Eddie Howe will be fuming at the way they conceded that goal. Oh, absolutely. Defending set pieces is one of the easiest things to do. It's all about organisation and it's all about the will and the want to defend. I worked under Howard Wilkinson, who was one of the greatest set-piece coaches of all time. One of the most boring. <laughs> you know, he used to film it and make us watch it back in training afterwards. Oh. You know, But it worked. If you did what he said, you did not concede from a set-piece. And it, you know, you've got three players picking up the best headers. You put one player, a really good header, on the edge of the six-yard box that wants to attack the ball. Because if you put a player there that wants to go and head it, doesn't mind if it takes the odd whack, you know, from time to time, you clear it most of the time. Headers, first time volleys, headers aren't scored from beyond 12 yards out in a diamond. You come out just beyond a yard beyond the post, you go to a yard in front of the penalty spot, and like a diamond or a rhombus, whatever you want to call it, <laughs> you don't, you don't, but you don't score from out there one touch. No. So all you've got, to, you've got to defend an area, sort of like pretty much 10 by 10. If you defend that aggressively, you clear the ball every single time. Simple as that. And, that, and, that's, and that's why it's, it takes practice and it takes discipline. I think a rhombus, not a dodecahedron, a rhombus. Um, Sam Matafaz, you've spotted something at uh, half time. What are you seeing? No, I just noticed that Harvey Barnes came out early with a fitness coach and was doing his own individual warm up, and it was quite extensive. Uh, the other players have now come out to join him, but he was the one who was getting specific instruction. In fact, it's still happening now as the others are just playing the balls around and sort of warming up at half time. I mean, Danny, is that significant? Because usually you wouldn't go through a warm up of that sort of magnitude unless you were planning to come on. Yeah, I thought he, it looks like he is going to come on, but look at it. Joe Willock, perhaps? I mean, I'm, I'm trying to work. I can't see it being tactical. Because, no, be because of that injury that uh, yeah, because they, they were they, in the game. They were playing quite well, weren't they? Well, they are playing quite well. You know, they're dominating, they're creating chances. I'm not quite sure. It, it, there must be a little injury within that. But, he, but equally, I didn't see anybody sort of limping off and struggling, you know, as, as the players came down the tunnel. Uh, we shall see uh, if there are changes at the start of the second half. The rest of the Newcastle subs are out there warming up. West Ham subs are out there as well. Um, Sam Fender, North East musical superstar, playing a couple of gigs here at St James Park next summer. He once, as a young actor, played a dead body in the drama series Vera on TV. The dead body is winning here somehow <laughs> at Newcastle tonight. <laughs> it's Newcastle nil, West Ham 1, live on game night on TalkSport. Monday game night on TalkSport with Labrooks. Supercharge your odds with our odds boost button. Selected market supplies the first £50 pounds of stake. Terms apply. 18 plus. Gamblerware.org. 129 at McDonald's gets you a mini Oreo McFlurry. 129 on a big night out gets you... Sorry, no trainers. McDonald's save a menu. Actually get your money's worth. From 11am. Price and participation may vary. Price varies on delivery. Subject to availability. You don't just check in to a village hotel. You work out. You jump in. You play on. You tuck in. And drink up. Village Hotels. 33 locations with everything under one roof. A huge gym with pool and great membership opportunities. And a buzzing pub and grill with delicious food, ice cold beers and live sport. Check out villagehotels.com and work out, stay, meet and play. At Betfair, we're about finding different ways to play. Like with our 90-minute guarantee. We've all been there. The clock ticks over into 90 minutes and then a speculative cross into the box ricochets off a knee and goes in, ruining your bet. But with Betfair's 90-minute guarantee, if your bet is winning at 90 minutes or full-time, we pay out. Betfair. Play different. 
Applies to Match Odds 90 Market or Markets with the 90 icon. Sportsbook exclusive. Terms and conditions apply. 18 plus be gambleaware.org. Black Friday deals are now on at Screwfix. Get huge discounts on a wide range of products. Save £60 on the DeWalt 18-volt brushless impact driver bear unit. Now only $49.99. And Sight Quartz safety boots now half price at only $19.99. Also, save £30 on the Turbo Gold Trade Pack, now only $19.99. For more Screwfix Black Friday deals, shop on the app, online and in-store. Don't miss out. Deals end 2nd of December. Subject to availability. See screwfix.com for full T's and C's. Football is back and it's game on. Get the ultimate football coverage with the Sun's free pull-out goals. With the best writers pitch side for in-depth match reports, it's all about Goals. And with unrivaled news from the Premier League to League Two, it has to be goals! Stay up to date on all the latest football action. Get your free copy of Goals every Saturday, Sunday and Monday, only in the sun. We all fantasise about our perfect home. Sipping a morning coffee out on the terrace. Good morning, Mr Squirrel. Morning. The kids building a treehouse in the garden. I'm living my perfect childhood. But come on, this isn't real. Listen, if you're serious about making your fantasy a reality, find out what your home is worth instantly with a free online valuation estimate. Get real about moving. Get on the market. Most common time to obtain an online quote between 1st of April 2024 and 30th of June 2024 was under three minutes. Excludes Northern Ireland. Settle down for a night of crime. Witness a heist. Follow a car chase. Eat too much popcorn. Meet a mafia boss. Join in on a bank robbery. Think about making a cup of tea. <sighs> Be too comfortable to get up. For less. Selected IKEA sofas are now at a new lower price, along with thousands of other products. IKEA, the wonderful everyday. Monday game night on Talk Sport with Sky Sports. Stream the biggest Premier League games. Available with no contract on now. 18 plus. Stream via internet. Terms apply. Leave behind the workday blues. More live football on a Monday night. What a chance. What a goal. This is game night on Talk Sports. Game night on Talk Sport at St. James Park. Getting a lot of love for the uh, Vera reference. Look, Vera's good. It's not quite Midsummer Murders, though, is it? Let's get the halftime odds with Labrooks. Odds update on Talk Sport with Labrooks. Get money back as a free bet up to £10 if one leg of your football 5 plus hacker lets you down. Pre match straight line hackers only. Odds are 3 to 1 or greater. 18 plus gamblerware.org. And right now with Labrooks, you can get Newcastle at 17 to 10. The draw is 11 to 5. And the West Ham win is 6-4. to four. Remember, West Ham lead 1-0. Anthony Gordon to score was 7-4. to four. It's been boosted to 5-2. to two. That's the latest odds with Labrooks, 18+. plus. BeGambleAware.org. Odds update on TalkSport with Labrooks. Supercharge your odds with our odds boost button. Selected markets applies to first £50 of stake. Terms apply, 18+. plus. GambleAware.org. Uh, we've got loads of football coming up live on the TalkSport network this week alone. Tomorrow night, Sporting host Arsenal live on TalkSport. And Mikel Arteta was asked just how far his side has come since they last played against Sporting two years ago. Well, that's a good question. It's always a good exercise to see the team a few years back. And I watched both games, obviously, just to have an understanding how we prepared them, what it worked, why it didn't. And it's difficult to recognize a team two years later, you know, because you tend to see and look at the game and other stuff in a, in a different way. But it was it was good. It seems longer ago, to be fair, <laughs> in a way. Uh, but here we are again. The good news is we are in a, in a different competition, a competition that we really want to be and be dominant and be important. And this is where we are looking for. It's interesting. Uh, sport knocked him out of the Europa League, I think. Uh, but it is Sporting against uh, Arsenal tomorrow night, live on TalkSport in the Champions League. On TalkSport 2 tomorrow night, Sunderland take on West Brom, who suddenly started scoring goals. Wednesday night, does it get any bigger than Liverpool against Real Madrid right now? I'll be at Anfield for commentary of that on TalkSport. And on TalkSport 2, another gigantic Champions League clash. Villa take on Juventus. Villa Park will be rocking. Uh, Juventus were actually the last team to knock Villa out of Europe's top club competition way back in 1983 in the quarter-finals. Villa just couldn't cope with, get this, for some of the names in the Juventus team back then, Platini, Rossi. 
Tardelli, Bettiger, Boniek. It's like a who's who. Galacticos, incredible. Uh, Chelsea, Man United and Spurs all live on the TalkSport network Thursday night. Chelsea, top of their conference group, are the early game on TalkSport 2 in Germany against Heidenheim. Spurs in the top eight in the Europa. United are not. Ruben Amarin with work to do there. Spurs and Man United games both kick off at eight. And Friday night, two monsters. Brighton, Southampton on TalkSport. Sheffield United, Sunderland on TalkSport 2. I'll be at Bremen Lane for that one. That Brighton commentary is our 150th live match of the season on the TalkSport network. Won't even be December by then either. TalkSport, your home for live football. We have the best commentators, the best ex-pros giving their insight. We're at more games than anyone else. We have more commentaries than anyone else. We bring the EFL to the nation and nobody else does. TalkSport, we love football as much as you do. And let's go back to that Spurs game very quickly. Danny Mills, I want your views on this because Vicario has got that injury just as the Newcastle players come out. He's got that injury and ankle surgery required. That is a massive blow for Tottenham who've just been on a big high at City. Yeah, it is. So, you know, you're looking at probably a minimum six to eight weeks with that. You know, it could be longer depending on how serious it is and how the healing process goes. Fraser Forster coming in. I mean, he's, he's a reasonable replacement. You know, they should be able to get through that. They'll get them through to January at least, you know, without too much trouble, I would have thought. And then they'll probably have to make a decision whether they bring somebody else in. Yeah, that is, uh, that's a hard one. A real hard one for uh, Spurs to take after uh, a big win at the weekend. Tough one for them to take there. Vicario uh, undergone surgery for a fracture of his right ankle. Um, he's going to be assessed by the uh, medical staff to determine when he can return to training and uh, obviously any injured player same as uh, Vicario will wish them well at Talk Sport players uh, back out the uh, half time team talk I'm sure in the West Ham dressing room was how on earth are we winning this and in the Newcastle dressing room how on earth are we not winning this as the referee goes over to the uh, centre circle placing the ball on the centre spot and Sam Matapace's observations were correct. We are going to see a change at the start of this second half where it's Newcastle nil, West Ham United won somehow. Game night on TalkSport is the second half with Danny Mills and Sam Matapace. Well, the last time these two met was the 4-3 Newcastle win in March when Harvey Barnes came off the bench to score twice after West Ham had taken a 3-1 lead. It meant that Newcastle were unbeaten in the last five Premier League meetings with the Hammers. He also got two the season before. And he is off the bench once again. And he is the super sub since joining Newcastle. The super sub has the most goal involvement by any Premier League substitute. Six goals, three assists in 20 cameo appearances. Can he make the difference in this second half, Danny Mills? I think it's one of those changes, although it was forced upon Eddie Howe, is actually probably going to work out quite a good tactical one. Joe Linton drops into the middle of the park, uh, where Joe Willick was. Harvey Barnes comes in, but Harvey Barnes has got a bit more pace, he's a bit more aggressive going forward, a bit more of an attacking threat as well. So it could be a, could be a, a good lucky change. Could be a blessing in disguise. That's the words I was looking for. I'll run through the 2-11s for you in just a second, but Joe Linton has just helped it out for Barnes for his first touch on halfway, a long sleeve black... Uh, jersey with white stripes, black shorts and black socks, attacking the goal away to our right in the second half, Newcastle United with Nick Pope in goal, Livramento share, Lloyd Kelly and Lewis Hall the back four, Longstaff, Gimaraes and Joel Linton across the middle, Harvey Barnes, Isaac and Gordon, Gordon out on the right hand side as he finished the first half and Barnes on the left at the start of the second 45. Fabianski is the West Ham goalkeeper, the back four right back, Wambasaka, Jean-Claire Todibo at centre-half alongside Max Kilman and Emerson at left fullback, Carlos Soler and Socek are the two holders with Pagatar behind Antonio and Somerville and Bowen on the flanks. Here is Antonio trying to get down the outside of Lloyd Kelly in the right fullback position. It goes off Kelly and out for a corner kick, the first of the second half and uh, Newcastle United will want to defend this one better than they did at the start of the first half. Yeah, and also that team talk, Freddie Howe, is like, you know, you've got to come out, you've got to keep doing the same things. You've got to keep attacking fast, you've got to keep closing down, keep that intensity. The break was brilliant for West Ham, you know, they needed it. You know, they needed a, a bit of a reset. Newcastle probably didn't want 
the half-time break. Emerson in towards the near post, chested down by uh, Longstaff, and then very quickly to release Gordon over on the far side, and Gordon is scampering forward, down the right touchline. He gets to the edge of the box, West Ham get men back. Longstaff joins the attack, Livramento goes down the outside, his cross into the box is a low one, which is prodded away by Jean-Claire Tordibo. It goes up to Antonio, who tries to hold on to the ball, with his hand actually at one stage, and then Hall wins it back, the free kick is eventually given, and they play on because it's worked out to the far side, the left, and Barnes now gets into the area, a right footed cross, deep towards the edge of the six-yard box, it's headed away by Emerson, comes back out to... Gordon, Gordon into the area, looking for Isaac, trying to go down the outside. Livramento with a ball towards the far post. Barnes tries to help it back towards the other side of the goal. It's a bit messy inside the 18-yard box. They haven't quite got it clear. Cher gets on the end of it and smashes it from 30 yards. It hits the defender and comes back out the halfway. And Pope comes and meets it inside the centre circle. Oh, but well now he's got a pack pedal. No, he's OK. He was back a little bit, wasn't it? Kelly had given him a pass. He was like, oh, I'm not quite sure I want it. Ten yards outside my own area. He's a little bit untidy inside that penalty area from West Ham United as they tried to clear the ball, which was bobbling around inside their box. It's, pa it's panicky, isn't it? You know, as the ball comes in there, it's like defend at all costs. Here's Lewis Hall, play down the left channel by Gimaraes, gets into the area, then tries to strike left-footed. It's blocked by Kilman, comes out to Barnes again. Barnes now on the edge of the area, down the side of the box, a left footed cross into the area. It's nudged away by the central defender, Todibo again. And out of the box it goes, but there's pressure on the West Ham defence here, and they're not getting out quick enough now. Joel Linton down the left into Isaac. Isaac trying to turn, gets in on his right foot, then goes along the 18-yard line, strikes right-footed, down low, blocked by Kilman, hooked away by Socek, back it comes again. And here is Barnes, down the left, attacking the defender Wambasaka to Hall. Hall drags it back, plays it back wide. Barnes again, low into the box, stabbed away by Kilman, only as far as Bruno Gimaraish, and it's all Newcastle. It's all Newcastle, and again, West Ham are just standing off, allowing Newcastle to get the ball down, pass it around. Gordon into Longstaff, travels out towards the corner flag, being harassed by Pakitaru, who nudge, nudges the ball away from him, but can't get it clear. It goes out of play, it's a Newcastle throw, and they have it on the far side. 1-0 to West Ham, remember. We played five minutes in the second half, and Newcastle have come out with personnel changes. Barnes has gone out to the left-hand side to replace... Joe Willock, who came off with, I think, an injury at half-time. We'll try and get clarification of that. It's a poor clearance that's gone straight to Hall, though, from West Ham's defence. And now Barnes is running at them again. Joel Linton back towards Barnes, inside the area. Socek cuts across him and just blocks off his route. And out comes the goalkeeper and gobbles it up on the edge of the six-yard box. And it's still 1-0 West Ham. It's one of those games where, apart from put the ball in the back of the net, Newcastle have done pretty much everything right. That one lapse in concentration from the corner where they allowed Socek obviously to get the header. But they're playing well, they're passing it well, they're closing down well. They just haven't been able to find that way into the back of the West Ham net yet. Well, they usually always score. 23 times in the last 24 Premier League games they have scored here at St James's Park. But not tonight, not yet anyway. Here is Somerville, far side, trying to jink his way past Livramento. He's got company with Gordon as well, gets it back to Emerson. Left side of the penalty area. It's dripped by Pakitar towards the far post and Pope comes out and punches it well. Uh, Wan-Bissaka picks up the pieces in the right side of the West Ham attack. They're high up, attacking the Gallagate in this second half. Soler to Pakitar and then out towards the left where it's uh, with Kilman. West Ham in charge. A victory for Newcastle will take them six. West Ham United want to get as much distance between them and those below them as possible. It may well work for them as well tonight. If they can keep it as it is, and they will move up 14th position to within just goal difference of Bournemouth. They won't go any further up the table, but they'll get closer towards Bournemouth in the table. Here is Vera Bowen travelling down the right, dispossessed by Joel Linton. And then Bruno Gimaraes sends Barnes away. Across comes to Debo. Isaac makes a run outside him. It's played towards the far post. It's a bit behind Gordon because of a deflection, but he's got back hold of it on the right side of the area. Tries to jink in, get it onto his left foot. Shows towards the far corner. It's only narrowly wide. I don't know how he got the shot away from there. He's quick feet, a quick action, and it just grazed the outside of the post. 
I think it was a really unusual one. I think the sort of the, the tackle came in as he was swinging his left foot and almost sort of stabbed it onto his left foot as he had, as he had a swing at it. But again, it wasn't a foul. It was Joel Linton. It was a great challenge on Jared Bowen. And you're right, it was just a slight deflection. Played it beyond Anthony Gordon. Just watch it again now. Yeah, it is. This is what the, the defender kicks it onto his left foot as he has a swing. So close to being the equaliser for Newcastle United, who trail here by a goal to nil. West Ham defence has conceded so many goals in 2024, 63 in the Premier League, and prior to this round of fixtures, only the three promoted teams and Wolves had a lower expected goals tally than West Ham, which shows you how timid their attack has been. They've offered very little in attack since scoring their goal, but they do lead, and it only takes one. Here is Pakatar, out wide to Bowen, Bowen to the edge of the area, He's got a chance to feed it into Wambasaka now, whose right-footed shot goes in off the post, across the goalkeeper, and it's 2-0 West Ham. Aaron Wambasaka, who hasn't scored for years and years, has sent the ball into the far corner, off the post and into the net, swishing his shot across Nick Pope from the edge of the six-yard box, and it's 2-0 to West Ham United. It's a funny old game, this football, isn't it? <laughs> I mean, it's unbelievable. What is it, their third shot on target the whole night, or third shot all night? wan one of the most unusual people to pop up and score. I mean, Pakatar wins it on the halfway line. And he releases his Bowen down the right-hand side, and then just plays it in to wan who's running. And in all honesty, it's a, little, it's a scuffy little shot but what it does because it's because he doesn't hit it cleanly it just creeps inside the far post Pope can't get anything on it and agonisingly all the Newcastle players all they can do is just watch as it comes in off the post into the back of the net and somehow I've no idea how but West Ham find themselves 2-0 up Aaron Wan-Bissaka scores his first goal in three and a half years February 2021 the last time he netted for Manchester United against Southampton in a 9-0 victory and he has scored the second goal on the night for West Ham who lead now by two goals again at St James's Park here's Bowen looking for a third edge of the box striking it saved down low by Nick Pope Remember, it was only March where they led by two goals and ended up losing the game in the second half, West Ham. Newcastle will hope history repeats itself. West Ham won't. Well, we should have a great game on now because Newcastle have just got to go for it. You know, keep doing what they're doing, but, it, you know, up it even more. Mavropanos coming on to replace Tadebo, I think, who is injured. So there's going to be a change for West Ham United. As they look to try and shore up their defence, Dinos Mavropanos, who played for Greece in the international break. In fact, he's had a better time with Greece recently than he has with West Ham United. Substitution for he's going to come on to replace Jean-Claire Todibo. Sub for Newcastle are going to come on soon as well. They're, just, they're all having a chat down there. This is one of those games where Eddie Howe's thinking, you know, Newcastle deserve to win the game, but you don't always get what you deserve in football you know that from the way that they're playing I think there's not much more and he, he set his team up right they're playing quite well they've been unfortunate Adrian's just sent me a note actually saying you know they're thinking of bringing Tenali on now but why did they not bring Tenali on at half time which would have been a like for like switch for Joe Willock well I, I just think maybe they were thinking that Harvey Barnes maybe gives them a little bit more explosiveness a bit more of an attacking threat down this left hand side and Joel Linton can play that role in midfield pretty well you know he's, he's comfortable at doing that in there he's probably better in that area than he is out he's, I mean, than he is out wide Antonio handles the ball as the ball goes over the top of Pakatar's head it's going to be a free kick on this near side Bowen kicked the ball away and the referee thought about uh, offering a booking and now <laughs> it's gone too far the other way uh, Tonali is about to come on Longstaff yeah I would have thought so yep. Longstaff for uh, Tonali so I think what Tonali will probably just go and sit in front of the back two or the, you know the back two the two centre halves and that allowed Gimaresh to go forward a little bit more and Joel Linton to play a little bit higher up the pitch 
Well, let's see what happens here because Joel Linton looks as if he is going out towards the right hand side. Tonali's going to sit with Bruno, I think, and Gordon's going to go just behind Isaac in a number 10 position. I'd, I'd still want Gimaraes to push further up the pitch. The ball forward towards the right hand side, and uh, out goes Lucas Fabianski to get it. I mean, sometimes you can do almost all the right things and still not come away with and, a result. And, and, this, and Newcastle will look back at this game and think that, I think. And, and this is why sometimes in a one-off game, you don't always get what you deserve. You know, that's why the, the season is always an equaliser, because over 38 games, you finish in the league where you, deserve to, to, you know, where you deserve to finish. But we've seen it before. You know, there are games where sometimes it just doesn't go your way, you get unlucky things go against you Bowen nabbing the ball on the halfway sending it wide towards the right Antonio trying to turn the ball round the corner and get past Hall he's done that sufficiently and then edged him off the ball sends it back into the centre it's cleared away by Bruno Gimaraes Takatar forward onto Carlos Soler Soler clips it forward onto Somerville lovely touch brilliant tackle by Kelly sent wide towards the left back into the box it goes from Emerson comes back out from Hall Socek strikes it blocked by Cher and it goes back to the halfway line another chance for West Ham United and Somerville might feel he should have scored yeah probably should have done a little bit better but suddenly now West Ham playing with a bit of freedom 2-0 up they've got some Socek confidence trying to turn does manage to do that and drags it straight at Nick Pope and now the natives are getting a little bit restless yeah and, it, and, and it's difficult because as you say Newcastle haven't done a lot wrong in all honesty one lapse of concentration in the first half similarly in the second two little mistakes is all they've made in the game Barnes picks the ball up on halfway, canters down the left, Wambasaka stabs the ball out, wins that duel, and it goes out for a throw in, level with the edge of the penalty area that Newcastle are attacking down this left hand side. We've nearly hit the hour mark. West Ham lead by two goals to nil. Their defence has creaked so much this season. Newcastle will be expected to open it up at some point. It hasn't happened yet. They've had their chances. Here is Kelly. On to Hall, back to the left-hand side it goes again. Barnes tries to motor up towards the edge of the area and then just flicks it to Gordon. Gordon, who might see more of the ball now that he's playing in this number 10 position and allowed to wander where he wants. Barnes, Hall, back to Bruno Gimaraes. West Ham with everybody behind the ball. Cher steps up, right-footed, drives one of those pile drivers into the sky and it flies into the Lees's end away to our left hand side if you're going to hit that shot you've got to hit the target if not your rest of your teammates are giving it to you you know I know he scored one or two blockbusters in his time but it's not that often poor decision really to shoot from that distance a little bit of frustration keeping it creeping in yeah well, there's still half an hour to go and a lot can happen Callum Wilson on the bench if required Murphy warming up, Almiron warming up too. And uh, I thought Almiron was going to run on the pitch then. He yeah. sort of ran towards the ball, didn't he? Here is uh, Carlos Soler on loan from PSG to Emerson. He is uh, pretty useful on that left hand side for West Ham United. He might not be the perfect fit for them, but he certainly worked his way into their team on a regular basis over the last couple of years. Antonio holding it up well, laying it off, and then sending it back towards uh, the halfway line it goes up over towards Bowen who gets chopped by Kelly that's going to be a free kick on the edge of the area and it might be our first booking of the night for Lloyd Kelly this will be interesting to see how close it was to the penalty box I know we had one a really sort of contentious one in the Liverpool game great touch from Bowen outside of his left foot he brought it down well yeah no, he is outside Kelly got him right ends up falling on inside. the edge of the penalty area it was a good ball forward actually and it started with Antonio bringing it down laying it back off into midfield it went over the top of the Newcastle defence and Bowen did well to bring it down and then draw the foul from Kelly who is the first man to go in the referee's notebook well sometimes I've been in teams that are struggling you know at the wrong end of the table sometimes you just need a winner and out of somewhere yeah you know you don't always deserve it you just need that win to give you a little bit of a kick start maybe this is it for West Ham maybe they do lead by a two goal margin now and they're singing champions of Europe you'll never sing that to the Newcastle fans 
Emerson lining up the free kick, so is Carlos Soler. I think it'll be Soler who's going to strike it here. Hits it, right-footed, towards the far corner, flapped away by Nick Pope. It almost came back to Kilman then, and then it was kicked clear by Lewis Hall from the rebound. And now they look to fashion a second-phase attack. Lucas Pagatar on the right side gets it back to Dinos Mavropanos, who strokes it infield, gives it to Somerville. Somerville back to the halfway line. Newcastle have just lost their way a little bit, Dan. Lost a bit of intensity, haven't they? That, that closing down that was so good in the first half that they've just dropped off a touch. One by Kelly on this near side. Now Gordon with a chance to break. Nothing a goal wouldn't solve. He tried to play an ambitious ball forward towards Alexander Izak. Joel, Joel Linton was probably the right ball, wasn't it? A bit further out to the right-hand side. He was in more space. It's just a bit of... Oh, not desperation but there was a little bit too much urgency there to get the ball forward I thought from Anthony Gordon Somerville trying to bring it clear on halfway it was pulled down by Cher it's going to be a free kick and sometimes when you're trailing 2 nil, Sam you, as soon as you win the ball you want to try and get that goal back as quick as possible yeah. and that's when you can sort of try and force the issue sometimes and make mistakes well there's a lot of discussion always around Newcastle United but most of the discussion centred on them winning this game tonight. They expected to, they wanted to, they want to get back into that top six area. It's never easy in the Premier League. Anyone can beat anyone and the tightness of the table, especially going into this weekend, certainly underscored that. But they've got to come up with something to get out of this hole that they've found themselves in. Lewis Hall gets in on Bowen again and plays it against the England man and does very well to get back to put that out for a goal kick rather than give away a corner that was excellent defending I think so he's got a bit more pace than I thought as well Lewis Hall I mean, he had a one on one with Antonio earlier on and you know match, pretty much matched him and he's just matched Jared Bowen as well two fullbacks uh, trained in the Chelsea Academy but playing for Newcastle United in the Premier League and now playing for England and one of them Livramento is breaking away on the right hand side here Far and he's post. got three players over and one of them is Isaac inside the penalty area it was the wrong option because Barnes was free at the far post and the ball into Isaac was just a little bit too much behind him he had to readjust his position he couldn't do so and headed it well wide I think Livramento got caught not quite knowing which pass to hit whether to try and whip it for Isaac or drive it to the far post and that sort of did neither really and it was a little bit too high for Isaac who jumped incredibly well jumped a little bit too early Juan Basaka is getting forward at pace again taking the ball through the centre circle then playing it forward towards Carlos Soler it wasn't a great pass and Cher was able to pick it off with relative ease now Juan Basaka is out of position they should shift the ball out to this left hand side Gordon does just that but it's behind Barnes and goes straight out of play I think Tonali was he taken out Adrian Durham seems to say no he's gone down off the ball a little bit late not sure if he was caught or not there's a bit of frustration creeping into uh, Newcastle and again just rushing the ball forward trying to force the issue and there's still quite a way to go <laughs> 25 minutes before the end of the game you're listening to Talk Sport Newcastle behind by two goals to nil Bruno Gimaraes has just challenged Pakatar he's gone down this is what it's going to be like now between now and the end of the game West Ham trying to take the sting out of it uh, it's a good scream wasn't it it's good, it was a good scream Squ actually a squeal more of a squeal I think you like that did you well, uh, you're listening to Newcastle nil West Ham 2 on Talk Sport with Sky Sports and don't forget that you can stream the biggest Premier League games available on no contract with now like Newcastle versus West Ham live right now search now sports Emerson not a great clearance by him drops in the centre circle Mavropanos wins it for West Ham he then nudges it down to Lucas Pakatar and West Ham just growing in confidence I think a little bit just knocking the ball around with a little bit of confidence going to make another change I think yeah I think, I think Murphy's going to come on in a minute and trying to get the ball forward to Isaac once again and again they haven't quite found the pass and West Ham have defended it well and Callum Wilson Sam both, both getting stripped off in front of us so two big changes on the way for Newcastle United here is Wambasaka 
Round the corner from Socek to Bowen. Out comes Nick Pope. And it's he'll be just put it short Great. out of play. It did look like uh, Bowen was in an offside position, but the referee didn't concur. Nor did the assistant on this near side, who is just having a chat with uh, Lewis Hall, who's asking the question. Because it, it goes to the goalkeeper. Is that why he doesn't give the offside? But then the goalkeeper's like forced to kick it out of play. Well, it should be offside if, if the play continues, <laughs> shouldn't it? Wilson and Murphy... But, again, uh, but I guess he, he, doesn't, he doesn't touch the ball, does he? He'll get anywhere near yeah, but it, if really. He makes, if, he, if he forces somebody else to play the ball, then he's influencing the play. Well, I, I, that's what should happen. Uh, helped on by uh, Wan-Bissaka. And then taken by Bowen away from Hall. And Hall just got a little bit disorientated there. And Antonio is breaking down the right side. Low cross into the box. Share to be careful, has to clear it away. And it comes out on this near side and goes out of play. Anyhow, getting a little bit frustrated. Wilson coming on and uh, Gordon is coming off so it's going to be two up top is it or is it going to be a jiggle around here off comes Joel Linton on goes Murphy Isaac is going to come on this left hand side what do you make of that change well they're going for it aren't where's they? Barnes going <laughs> I think it's 4-4-2 I think that's what they've pretty much dropped into yeah Murphy, yeah, Murphy gone on the right-hand side, so you're right. The, your, your first guess was right, you know, two up top. Always yeah. stick with your instincts. Instincts, um. instincts, that's what it's all about. Gut feeling, you were bang on. I've had a good gut feeling after I've had that cake that you bought us, by the way. Wow, it's nearly Christmas, thought I'd treat you. Yeah, it's very kind of you. Here is uh, Fabianski, hitting it long and high into the evening sky, twinkling under the floodlights, the yellow ball that's used now because the clocks have gone back in the Premier League. You don't get that from Danny Murphy on a Monday night, do you? <laughs> Where is Dan tonight, by the way? Be an holiday somewhere. Oh. Here it. <laughs> not that we're not enjoying your presence, by the way, Danny. It's just <laughs> well, I brought, Tuesday I brought, nights I brought cakes. So I, had to up, I had to up the game somehow. <laughs> Bowen into uh, Pakatar. Motors in towards the Newcastle half. Good bit of dispossession from Cher. And now a chance to break for Newcastle. They put the throttle down. Isaac receives it left side into the West Ham half he goes he runs laterally and then switches the play to the far side Murphy picks it up pushes it in front of him good cross into the box Fabianski comes out and punches clear it's a really good punch as well still Newcastle keep the pressure on Murphy stops the ball waits gives it to Livramento back to Bruno Gimaraes what's he going to do he motors towards the edge of the box slips it into the area looking for Barnes it takes a deflection does it goes back to Fabianski and he will pick it up anyway and clear Again, Newcastle doing pretty much everything right in that attack. You know, they, they break away, they switch the ball out. It's a good first touch from Murphy, get it out of his feet, whips a great ball in. And then Fabianski comes out Superman style with a really good punch. Hall on halfway. Gets the ball into Tonali. And Newcastle look to try and attack again. Jason Tindall. He's obviously acclimatising to this area because he's not wearing a proper jacket tonight, just a tracksuit. Whereas everybody else is wrapped up in big puffer jackets. Newcastle putting the pressure on from the front again and Bruno Gimaraes has it, but there's a little bit more intensity about the West Ham press too and they're not making it easy for Newcastle to prise them open. And here is Lewis Hall down the left side trying to get a cross into the box. It's blocked by wan Saka again. Uh, Isaac making a nuisance of himself the ball drops in the area gathered up by Barnes Barnes drifts the ball into the penalty spot fended away by Kilman. it comes out to the middle of the West Ham half and then worked out towards the far side and Somerville and he leads an attack which slows very quickly as Newcastle flex back into shape and Wilson who hasn't been seen since May pinches the ball off Lucas Pakatar who was not aware of his surroundings Isaac spreads it wide. Murphy with a cross into the box. In towards the penalty. Close. It's got to be a penalty. Carlos was all over Wilson. All over Wilson. The ball's gone out. Wilson's furious. He How's wants the VAR to get involved. Craig Pawson says play on. It's a piggyback. I mean, just have another look at it. It's WWE. Well, it's a penalty, isn't it? He stopped him from getting the ball by using his physical presence to wrestle him to the floor. But how can it not be a penalty? 
Well, the VAR is checking it. Chris Kavanagh is having a good old look. I don't understand what the referee is seeing in that incident. The moment that comes in, I sh- I'm sorry, I interrupted you. Shattered. Pe- oh my goodness! It's not been given. No clear evidence to overturn it. They're going with referee's call. Adrian Durham, on them. let me just give him a little bit of a helping hand and lift that jaw, jaw off the floor and put I, it back where it was. I, I'm gobsmacked. I mean, I just find that incredible. What more do you have to do? He jumped on his back. I'm surprised. We'll have to see what the uh, Premier League match centre says about that. Because it, it... Oh, they'll come up with some excuse. The, the letter of the law or something will be ridiculous. Well, did he do enough? Was he physical enough with yes. Car- Callum Wilson? To yes, stop it? I'm it's trying a to foul. play devil's advocate. Yeah, I know you are, but it's a foul. Simple as that. It, I mean, Wilson was absolutely certain, by the way. Also, uh, it doesn't matter whether Wilson was going to get the ball or not. It's still a foul. Yeah, I agree. Here is uh, Soler trying to send it forward. It's cut out by uh, Cher, and now they come forward again. He wants it over the top, Wilson. It's going to go wide instead to Murphy. Might run out of room here. It's not going to be in the uh, realm of his speed to catch that. You know, you talk about instinct, Sam. As soon as that came in, I interrupted you and went penalty. Yeah. The moment you see it from... And we're, what, 70 yards away? Well, you were pretty convinced. And then, and I and, think and once then we saw it... And again, then you see the replay and you think... It's definitely a penalty. Danny Ings is coming on. It'll be interesting to see who he comes on for. West Ham, at the moment, are on the hunt for a third goal. And Antonio has been fed by Somerville. He's over on the left. He sends the ball into the box. Lewis Hall's headed back towards his goalkeeper. He has to jettison one left arm up into the sky to pick it out. And then brilliantly bowls out towards the far side. At rapid speed, distributes it to Murphy, who switches the play from right to left. Isaac's got to chase it. Mavropanos is going to get there first and allow it to go out of play and away for a goal kick. Away to our left. There's 16 minutes left to play. Jason Tindall just having a quick word with a couple of those tired Newcastle bodies now. Calm down, play your football, says Eddie Howe. And on comes Socek and on comes Ings and off comes Emerson that's the uh, first one and I think Sufal go to left back perhaps because no Wimbasaka is going to go to left back so far will right, come to right M- back. M- Murphy's causing problems isn't he down that right hand yeah. side that they need a decent player that can defend one on one and Antonio is going to come off as well yeah Sufal at right back I, w- I would love to know what the re- why the referee Craig Paulson doesn't give it in the first place bear in mind if he gets it wrong it can be overturned and also what the VAR is looking at in that well the key question here it's is, a foul. Is, is is why wasn't there enough clear evidence to overturn that decision because the, the dictat is is that they only intervene now if the referee has made a clear error well, it's did, a foul. did it's he cl- make a clear yes, error because it's a foul well they've gone with the referee's <laughs> call here is Ings down the right side, driving the ball towards the edge of the box. 03717 that's the number to call. If you're a Newcastle fan or a West Ham fan and you want to talk to Jamie O'Hara and Jason Cundy tonight, the sports bar open for business as soon as we come off air here from St James's Park. Is it going to be a defeat for Newcastle United? They don't very often lose at home. Brighton, the only team to do so, to win here in the last 15 games in all competitions. But Newcastle, at this moment, don't look like winning the game. Currently Newcastle near West Ham 2. The latest odds are available at Ladbrokes, where right now you can back Newcastle to win the game at 16-1. to They came back from two goals down this fixture last year. Back West Ham at 2-15, to or 15-2 to on, and the draw is 13-2. to That's all thanks to Ladbrokes, 18-plus, BeGambleAware.org. I think Lewis Hall has played really well tonight. You know, I think he's he surprised me a little bit. He's got a bit more pace than I thought he had. Um, his composure's been very, very good. 
natural left footer as well obviously which helps for balance Murphy down the right side an early ball into the box it was a blind ball though he played it without looking up and there was no one in there ready for that sort of delivery it was cut out by West Ham and then they go motoring forward and Somerville's got a chance to get them on the front foot Ings who's taken over from Antonio plays it into Bowen so foul's gone down the right side he's drawn away a defender he's come back out on the edge of the box to Soler he's not going to get there Tonali is there to tuck it away and then it goes over towards the far touch line where it's collected by Juan Basaka. Pakita, West Ham keeping it at walking pace. Juan Basaka lofts one into the box. It's an easy catch for Nick Pope. And now we've brought away towards this near side. 77 on the clock. It's 2 0 to West Ham. And Newcastle have got to try and pull a magic trick out from up their sleeve. I tell you, if they get one in the next couple of minutes, it's going to make for a fantastic finish. Bruno Guimaraes, centre circle. Out to Lloyd Kelly. And then into Harvey Barnes. Infield it goes to Sandro Tonali. The Italian who scored the winner for Italy against Belgium in the international break. Can he come up with a defining moment of this game here at St James's Park? Here's the ball down the right side in towards Izak and it takes a little deflection, does it, and goes off and out for a corner. I think it does. Yeah, There's a good ball in behind, just a little dink over the top. Into that chat. Oh, we're taking it quickly. And here's Lewis Hall, left footed towards the far corner. Opened up his body but couldn't get it on target. Caught West Ham napping as they were trying to get set for the corner kick. And the ball was played into Lewis Hall. And he just wandered into an acre of space down that left-hand side. I just wonder if he had clipped that to the far post. Harvey Barnes was lurking with intent. I tell you what, it's not a million miles away. He's just not quite... Ex the idea was great. It was a great quick set piece. Quick thinking from everybody involved. And he just opened himself up. Didn't quite have maybe the belief to bend it in that far corner with a bit of pace. Bruno Gimaraes is just hobbling a little bit uh, in the centre of the park as the ball is sent long by Fabianski from the goal kick. We're into the final 12 minutes of the game. Tonali wrestling with Danny Ings. He's only got one goal this season. Goals have been few and far between since he joined West Ham, really. Here's Bowen, who gets a few more. Down the right-hand side. Low ball into the box. Space for Danny Ings, who strikes it. Blocked by Kelly. Comes back out to the near side. So foul. Gets a return from Bowen, gets to the byline, pulls it back. Ing swishes a foot at it, but couldn't connect with it. And Pope will pick it up rather easily on the edge of the six-yard box. Into share it goes, and then dropping deep to pick the ball up. Just short of the halfway line was Jacob Murphy as Newcastle try to gather their thoughts and construct an attack. Down the right with Isaac, who's popping up everywhere now. He's playing off Wilson. Tucks it back to Tonali, gets it back again. Isaac tries to poke it down the right side for Tonali. Tonali wants to get it into the centre. Across comes Somerville. It is going to be a Newcastle corner. Well, they're going to make one of these count. Lopetegui getting frustrated. He's desperate for a victory. Might just stave off the threat of the axe man. Lewis Hall to take it, far side, the Newcastle right, a left-footed in-swinger, this crowded the six-yard box now, Barnes is lurking at the back post, it's headed away, it'll come back to Barnes, who will send it, oh, he went to send it to Tonali, but it was behind Tonali, and wasn't very helpful, out it goes to the far side, Hall can't get there before Socek, and it's now a throw in which Fabian Scher will take. This is the only time, perhaps, where Newcastle lack the only sort of player is an out and out number 10 somebody with a bit of creativity somebody very different well he took him off Gordon would have no, but, it, no but no but he's, but he's not no he's not Gordon's a runner with a ball he's a dribbler he wants to run past people. You, you mean someone crafty yes like, someone, someone to drop into that number 10 space yeah. and, and pick a pass in the final third to get on the book to get you know the, the Foden-esque type player that yeah. drops into that hole picks a pass makes something happen out of nothing by a little pass when it's very very tight Adrian just said Almer I'm, I'm not sure Almer's that, that he's more of a runner with the ball as well perhaps I think you know that maybe that's what they've got to look at yeah maybe that's something that they don't have in the squad that sort of silky player who can knit that you know the, the, the Odegaard sort of player I, I know it's very hard to find them because exactly, they're, they're, yeah. they're few and far between but they can but open, that, open the door when it's tightly shut yes but that type of player and sometimes that's you know you can have that player on the bench 
Well, they've got the ball deep inside their own territory now, and they're trying to play their way out of a, a very tight spot. Kelly has eventually gone long towards Wilson. It's gone behind him, and then he's tried to run and get uh, there before so foul does he's still got a lot of speed for someone who's had so many injuries he looks fighting fit tonight Kieran Trippier coming on and so is Almiron that sort of shows you I think uh, that they need to go for a different plan and it might be that Trippier is going to come on for set pieces yeah definitely his delivery is exceptional isn't it oh he's in here Murphy in behind down the right hand side Wilson waiting in the centre but he can't find the pass oh, and the offside. offside flag's gone up anyway going to be a couple of changes for uh Lopetegui who's getting very animated on this near side he's got his arms on the back of Rodriguez he's saying right now I need you to go and shut this door here and keep this gap closed uh, Irvin is coming on too another midfield player Andy Irvin who's making his fifth appearance of the season he's just thinking come on just hang on hang on don't care how at this point haven't played particularly well but at the moment 2-0 up we've got the result keeping me job for a bit longer seven minutes to go It'll be a welcome return to three points for West Ham United. I bet there's a few managers out of work thinking, oh, didn't want this result. <laughs> uh, Selfishly, of course. Is that what managers out of work do, you think? I would like to think, well, I, I guess so. I would be if I was out of work, wouldn't you? Hoping that somebody else fails so that you can get in there. Well, yeah, how else do you get a chance? <laughs> Uh, here is the change, it's going to be uh, Guido Rodriguez who comes on and Carlos Soler who comes off. So a change for West Ham, I mean if it was to go wrong now, having made this sort of change... Oh, he's gone in the morning. He <laughs> would be in serious trouble, yeah. I think. In fact, he might be gone on the journey home if they lose 3-2 now. Uh, and the other change is Somerville coming off for Irving. Uh, but we haven't had the official confirmation of the uh, changes for Newcastle but Trippier is on and Livramento I think has come to this near side what have they done here uh, Irvin is on Lewis Hall gone into midfield oh, that would be a surprise wouldn't it three at the back two at three at the back no yeah, Trippier's gone right back. Lewis Hall holding in midfield. Yeah. Livermento left back. They've taken Bruno Gimaraes off because of, uh, presumably, the injury. Interesting. Not what I was expecting, if I'm honest. But, no. you know, we'll, we, sh we shall see. Trust in Eddie Howe's judgment. Uh, he knows what he's doing. But I, I would have thought you'd have left Lewis Hall down this side for balance on the left. Well, Livermento can play on the uh, left side. He did that. But he's not left-footed, well, is he? That's, that's the thing. Last season when he was called upon. No, he isn't left-footed. Ball cleared into the air by Fabianski. There's not many minutes now for Newcastle. Five to go. And they've made uh, their substitutions. And they've rolled their dice. There's no sort of accusation that he hasn't tried Ooh. to change it. He certainly has. That's a poor challenge by Sofal on Barnes. And a free kick given just two yards in from the touchline on this near side. How is it not a yellow card? It's a, tack it's a tackle from behind. He's got no chance of winning the ball. He was going to bring on Almiron, wasn't he, as well, at one stage. Almiron was out there getting changed. Yeah, Almiron sat back down again. Here is a long ball upfield towards the edge of the penalty area. It's cleared away and it come out towards the near side and Barnes now takes it on. It's on to Livramento. Livramento out on this near touchline, tries to get to the edge of the penalty area. Had he made? Was he trying to make too many substitutions? Well, I, I was just, I've just counted. They'd made five. Yeah, yeah, I think that might be the case. Uh, they might have miscounted. Ball down the right hand side, looking for Trippier. It's headed away by Juan Basaka. Uh, and now Tonali has uh, managed to pick up a loose ball. He's got to the byline. Can he produce a cross? He's taken down by Juan Basaka. That's going to be a corner on the far side. I think they might have forgotten maybe about the change at half time yeah. that they made. Yeah, I think they were trying to make another one. Here's a quick corner taken, given to Murphy, flicks it off a defender in Irvin, and it goes out for a corner again over on the far side. Uh, here is Trippier to send it into the centre. Needs a good delivery. Two minutes to go before the... Four minutes to go before the end of the game. In towards the near post, away by Pakitar. 
Newcastle look like they're going to get beaten for only the second time in 16 home matches. Maybe only the third time that West Ham have won here in 11 visits. Here is Livramento, 2-0 the score to West Ham, going into the final few moments of the game. And uh, actually, the longer the game has gone on, West Ham have defended better. Yeah, look, Newcastle have just lost that little bit of sharpness, that little bit of zip. They put so much effort, I think, into that first half. Their pressing, their closing down was exceptional. They just lost it a little bit, and they've lost it here to Ings because... Kelly has given away on halfway a poor pass and Irvin has just danced past Isaac and now it's back out to Ings Irvin again and gets it back to Soufal and keeps hold of it on the near touchline it's about keeping possession here for uh, West Ham United and it remains 2-0 Newcastle can't find a way back into the game and they look a little bit now like they're beaten and that's the feeling you're sort of getting from the crowd as well. It's just starting to flow away, to edge away. Uh, the referee's call, by the way, of no penalty for the challenge by Mavropanos on Wilson was checked and confirmed by VAR, deeming that the contact was not sufficient for a penalty. Yeah, I told you, they'll find a way to get out of it. Danny Mills disagrees. Do you? 03717 That's the number to call if you want to get in touch and uh, give your views to Jamie and Jason one by Tonali in midfield turns it over quickly looks up needs to play it sensibly here Isaac drops off he took a little bit too long maybe to get it forward Wilson then received it with three players around him and couldn't make anything of it and Pakatar takes it to the far side you're listening to Newcastle and West Ham 2 on TalkSport with Enterprise whatever the mission home or away Enterprise helps over 120,000 people every day this Newcastle side just the way they've played tonight reminds me a little bit of the Leeds team that I was in. We used to go hell for leather first half and, and try and overpower teams. But if we didn't get that goal, if we didn't score, sometimes we, we ran out of ideas a little bit and ran out of energy, you know, late in the second half because you put so much into that first sort of 30 minutes, 45 minutes of the game. And that's where maybe they just need to add that creative number 10 that they can bring off the bench sometimes in games like this where they're dominating having it most of it their own way they just need something that little bit different it's probably the only player that they don't have ball gets back to Nick Pope who smashes it high 89 minutes on the clock uh, Murphy forward and uh, somehow Kilman has managed to squeeze him off the ball five minutes of added time I think? think so I think that's just what the fourth official just put his hand up as, um, held out his five fingers or four fingers and a thumb before someone picks me up on that you never know you might be someone with six <coughs> digits uh, here is uh, Harsh just come from Norwich Tenali <laughs> that was not me <laughs> Bowen uh, moving it towards the middle of the park turn, turning away under pressure from Tenali I take full responsibility for that uh, Pakatar tries to thrust it forward it's kicked clear by Cher and Wilson trying to get in behind but Fabianski again who's done quite well actually with his starting position tonight sweeps up behind the defence and puts it out and away for a throw over on the far side time ticking away timely three points this will be for West Ham and Lopetegui only their third win in 11 in all competitions six minutes of added time I missed the one on the other hand or I was right uh, Hall onto Livramento down the near side tries to take on Bowen and it goes out of play and away for a throw down by the corner flag six minutes enough to turn it around well, if probably it, not enough well yeah an equaliser if, maybe yes if they get if they get one in the next two minutes you've got three four minutes be interesting to see what happened to West Ham it would just be interesting from a neutral point of view Newcastle to score now to see what happens it might be very entertaining in the last four minutes the pure panic stations I think from West Ham well Julian Lopetegui will say this is a good defensive performance by West Ham and bearing in mind they've considered so many goals in 2024 he might have a point can they hold on to the very end here 91 on the clock here is Isaac with five to play tries to nudge it into space down the right side for Trippier who's crossed his good Barnes up there with a header but it's a brilliant challenge from Sofal who gets there just ahead of Barnes and glances it out for a corner 
been an OK defensive performance, but Newcastle have created chances. Short corner taken quickly, given to Barnes, right side. Oh, it's a poor delivery. But it will be taken down by Cher, who's kept it in, recycled it, and then Wilson tries to get there, and Isaac does, but he hits the ball into the ground and doesn't connect with it, and it spoons up into the arms of Fabianski, and another chance goes a begging. It's a real slice as it comes back to him. I mean, that first ball from Barnes got incredibly fortunate. Completely misjudged at the far post, and Cher dropped it back in. It's almost an air shot from Isaac, isn't it? Well... It's going to be damaging for Newcastle United and their position in the table because they were ninth before the start of the day. They're going to drop to 10th now because of goal difference. Yeah, I didn't see this coming at all. Here on the left-hand side, the ball picked up by Barnes, moves in towards the penalty area, slipped into Hall under pressure from Ings, who's fighting for it, wins it. Irvin takes it towards this near side. Andy Irvin holds it up, plays it back in field. Ings keeps hold of it, Bowen goes backwards, there's no need for them to force the issue, they have already done their job tonight, West Ham United. Port Vale 1, Crew 1, in injury time over on Talk Sport 2, with Port Vale down to 10 players. And here at Newcastle, slipping below Fulham on goal difference, because they have dropped two goals in this game and we'll go down to 10th in the table as a result for West Ham we'll just go level on points with Bournemouth one point behind Manchester United in 12th and their run of fixtures upcoming might look a little bit more attractive after they've got away from the Arsenal game at the weekend Leicester away Wolves at home Bournemouth away Southampton away after the Brighton game they might think there's points in it for Julian Lopetegui and maybe he's been written off a little bit too soon. This could be the spark, Dan. It could be. It's a, fo it's a fortunate performance this evening. You, you can't say they've outplayed Newcastle. You can't really say they've deserved to win, although they're winning 2-0. If, if this game is played out another 99 times, then 98 times, probably Newcastle will win it the way the game's gone. It's just been one of those nights where... West Ham have rode their luck a bit. They've taken their chances. Here is Barnes into uh, Hall on the edge of the area. Uh, Socek heroically gets it away, goes down, screams that he needs a foul, then he realises he's not going to get it, and he springs back up and runs out from defence. It goes to halfway. So right. Newcastle have just run out of ideas, haven't yeah, they? they have. In, and, and that's where that little bit of craft of an 8 and a 10 player that can just do something a little bit different, pick a pass... Well, Kieran Trippier has a free kick opportunity here. He's actually going to leave this to Tonali. And Libramento is told to go into the penalty area to try and cause chaos. Trippier's left this for Tonali. This has got to be a good delivery. 23 out of 24 Premier League games at home before tonight. They have scored. They haven't yet here this evening. They're going to lose 2-0. Tonali in towards the edge of the six-yard box. Well defended by Mavropanos. Good strong header by him. Bowen runs it towards the near touchline and clears it away and then Hall gets a touch on it and it goes out on this near touchline. They won earlier in the season without necessarily deserving it at Crystal Palace. They've won here tonight where they've got over the line in surprising circumstances. Newcastle created all of the chances in the first half apart from the one that West Ham scored. West Ham have had a couple more in the second half. But it's been all Newcastle in terms of possession but they just haven't had the craft to unlock the West Ham defence. A West Ham defence that usually leaks, but not tonight. They've stood firm up here in the northeast, And Julian Lopetegui is starting to sense now that he has got three points in the bag. He's just gone over to Tony Harrington, the fourth official, and asked for clarification about how many more minutes there are to play. Well, Newcastle have it deep in their own half. Sometimes it's not how you win, it's just about getting that win. Isaac, edge of the area as the ball's thrust forward by Trippier. And there's a foul on the edge of the box. And it's going to be a handball which is given against the Newcastle player. And we've now played all six of our added minutes. And surely now West Ham are about to celebrate a vital three points on the road. They'll inch towards it, but they'll celebrate it 
with a mammoth noise from high up in the Leeses end. Irons, Irons, Irons is the cry. They want the full-time whistle. 2-0 the score. Craig Pawson puts the whistle to his lips. And they have the three points. West Ham burst the Geordie bubble and record their first away win since August. Newcastle didn't want the international break to come. And maybe we now know why. It's only the second home defeat in 14 Premier League games. It's not one that they or anyone else were expecting. They missed the chance to go into the top six. West Ham United come here and win by two goals to nil. Arguably, it's a smash and grab raid. West Ham have a long and storied history, 129 years and counting, and for many of those years, they were known for showing great patience with their managers. For a lot of supporters, their patience was running very thin with Julian Lopetegui, but this might just buy him some extra time. Newcastle nil, West Ham two. Well, as Danny Dyer would say, football's having a bubble, isn't it? That is a laugh. How on earth have West Ham won that? Incredible. I mean, you, you can't rely on football at all. It's too unpredictable. If I'd said a kickoff, West Ham would open the scoring from a corner. Wambasaka would get the second, and the Hammers would keep a clean sheet and win here. You'd have laughed in my face. But that's exactly what has happened here at Newcastle tonight, live on game night on TalkSport. And I'm going to tip my hat to a certain Troy Deeney, regular with us on a Saturday afternoon on Game Day Live. He was on H&J on TalkSport earlier, and he predicted a West Ham win. I think he got the score right, because he said 2-1. Yeah, he had no reason, though, did he? He just went, I've just got a feeling. <laughs> and his feeling was great. He it said 2-1, and it should have been a penalty in Newcastle, and that was the one that they should have had. But, listen, West Ham players are going over to the uh, Leeses to say thank you to their fans who've made a noise up there in the fifth, sixth tier of that stand they are miles up in the heavens there but they've enjoyed their moment they didn't think they'd get the win they've got the win and the players are enjoying it as well and thanking the fans and fair play to them for it listen they've got the win I don't really know how but they don't care do they a, a win's a win you know as simple as that it's still only three points you know it doesn't matter whether you win spectacularly or not they've got the win they've now got to build on that they've got a bit fortunate this evening I think the penalty was huge because that would have been what with 15, 16 minutes to go. Oh yeah, yeah. That'd have been a, yeah. Plus injury time. That'd have been a real turning point. You know, if Newcastle had got that and scored it, then it'd have been back to the wall time. And, and you could say we could, we could talk about ifs and buts and, and what might have been, but that was definitely a penalty, wasn't it? I mean, there's no question about it. I can't understand the PGMOL's um, this, this, defence of it. I don't like the phrase. The referees haven't played the game, so they don't understand. But what they don't understand is if you're running at pretty much full pace or you're running as quick as, you know, as quick as that and you get a little nudge in the back, you go down. It doesn't take an awful lot. So for them to say there's not enough of a push, has a referee or any of those officials ever been in that situation where they've been running at full speed and someone's given them a nudge? No. Mm. So they don't know what it takes to go down. It's like they it go, wasn't just a nudge, was it? Well, it wasn't, no. It was, <laughs> He's it was, clambered all over him. To be fair, it was a wrestling move. <laughs> it's like he's got his arm on the back of his neck and all sorts. But that's sometimes where I don't think they quite understand that you don't need an, that much to go down. He had his arm around his neck. Yeah. I think what's happening there is referee, yeah, all right, if the referee hasn't seen it, then fine. OK, and, and I think he should have seen it, but he hasn't seen it. But what he's done there, he's not given a penalty because he thinks if it's that obvious, VAR will overturn it. VAR's going with this referee's call thing. So even obvious ones like that are not being given. This is where it's so easy to clear up. If everybody could hear the dialogue between the two referees, all the, the VAR official has to say is, just go and have a look at that. That's it. Don't preempt it. Don't say, I don't think it's a penalty or I think it's a penalty. Go and look. Just say go and look at it and then let the referee on the field make his own mind up because I think if he sees that again he goes yeah that's a penalty OK let's talk about West Ham's win though because it's a big night for them a great night for them Huge. there's nothing like a long distance evening game where you win away from home those fans are loving every second of it they're a great coach journey back for them oh brilliant and they're, they're Listen, they've not played particularly well. It's not been vintage West Ham football. And there's still that problem for Lopetegui to overcome. He's been a bit...